kind of jumping in there and we're jumping, jumping in, in. And then we're yep. going wow. straight to the also we had we had totally live podcast okay. yep. and put in the, the video is starting the in 10. Oh, why can't i completely winging it yeah 100 percent mike fuck it I we'll do it live all right uh, and the uh, premiere started god damn it i still don't see the stream uh it is live is it unlisted that'd be funny that video. you are 100 percent right it's unlisted god this, there it is just the feeling of Upward. like being in a firefight and hearing okay. the, the click of the gun throwing it down okay we're listed now so my gunner's upside down and he's like laying in i see kill assist kill assist hey guys assist. uh I'm sorry about that it's kind of any of the games. last Whatever minute gun Hello. allows me to feel the most like john wick yes. i am there remember how excited I, feel like I was we might just need to watch it again afterwards too talking about going all yeah and john wick i heard the word john wick Halo means um here for everyone right i think that we should be live now i believe yes yeah, sir. perfect okay i'm still gonna fix obm why can't i see him you can't see me yeah um we can hear you guys we can hear you but uh what is you. halo multiplayer okay. this is gonna be super long to this but... tight arena yeah, style months, I think. combat and big team battle this wide open vehicle right, infused uh kind of combat we're taking that awesome legacy or classic Perfect. halo combat experience Hello, Joe. and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players we're going to give you great ways to customize your spartan really make your super soldier your own and we're kicking off a journey and we know you want to spend your money on microtransactions season to season <laughs> year after year <laughs> For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge, I think, was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new. We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a in a in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really. So what are they talking about right now? A celebration of previous Halo, as well as I iteration. They, they want to make something, something feels now. new. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Pretty much. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like what is the core killing things barely. Made the great Halo multiplayer arena. There we go. Great. Halo, it's really about fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And this looks fantastic start running so around, far. It's yeah, it does. It's about yeah, I'm definitely going to need to watch yeah. it again because I'm not looking at it, but I'm sure I'm it looks, really sure it looks good. Match. Well, because, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll pop back up like probably in four games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Sandbox. My favorite word. That's his favorite word. When we set out to look at Halo Infinite, somebody's audio. Whose audio is that? All right, give me half a second. There's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push one of the things that are true to Halo. What are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Equipment oh, no. is back, but equipment is kind of uh, has a, has a, like yeah. a bigger so voice than ever before. Awesome. We asked yeah. audio coming from? Of, uh, and and the could go after, application you know, of physics is kills, my dream come true. Uh, would you do that, yeah. or mm -hmm. could you go and get grappled to make sure that you to swing yourself to the other yeah, side yeah, exactly. of the map to back that, cap the catch was... We saw it as like another avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting okay, and OBM, you are on you know, thing, this and I think we're this good there. And how those interact with objectives. Whew, okay, let's see what's happening. Looking at how the power so are, play, like your class. Are we we're streaming like live? Yes, yes. Right yeah, we've been live for like five, six minutes. The title, what we're okay. looking at, what we're excited <laughs> for. So you pick that up, and you choose when you activate it. It goes oh, into early. your inventory. If you haven't used uh, it, yeah. and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop Look that over here, and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very... That actually looks really good. They're giving a fair bit of gameplay here. Of it and modernize yep. It. I mean, when it comes to the vehicles, yeah. we went this, in this decided is a to fair bit a of uh, systems when I, I take damage to my soon. warthog. Yeah, uh, yeah, my, sure. My wheels can get blown off. Uh, you bet there's going to be a bit of of the vehicle that changed uh, how effect. my vehicle is oh yeah there it is they showed the water. back left wheel yeah. another thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic so when you hit this threshold the vehicle oh, catches fire and it's very much 
you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of Those watching, let me know how the uh, audio is. If it's too high, too low, I can change and move that around. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razor. Second ago, the back okay. has this like okay. multi awesome. storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you want oh, to like, attach cool. turrets, power weapons, nice. fusion mm -hmm. coils, objectives, and that is what really making uh, hey, nice Razor like a kick a lot of butt so in the years. campaign. Yeah. The levels We're gonna have to replay this whole thing. In yes. A yes, for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. And it'll be. It'll look even better once this is over. Yeah. Match, what do they want to oh, do? I'll put the link in chat for people. What type of experience are they looking to have? What kind of combat? What kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me, BTV is so the grappling hook I noticed, is it a one-time use? Because in one of the trailers, it looked like he used it twice. Just one match, right? like you see the That's what I'm I trying had, to figure out. Yeah, I, I haven't figured. I thought it was going to be like a pickup on the field, really right? But I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't look like it Those feels you had, you know, No, it's a pickup on the field. The previous is it? Okay. And just turn the mm -hmm. volume up. Vehicles you might just no get a couple charges out of it. Oh man, this looks good. Like a power weapon, right? Or any item. That. Pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. Tank is inbound. We have Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like like a real battlefield, and, and it's very exciting. Uh, I don't this know how I feel about that. More players. This is just but the, uh, the, beautiful the things. Well, no, apparently the uh, sketch went and uh, confirmed that it's not uh, like Halo 4. It's just an aesthetic change for weapon spawning and vehicle spawning. Your big okay, so it's the same weapon. Yeah. Instead same of them thing. just appearing right. in midair, they just get dropped off by like. Okay, okay, that's good. Right. Yeah. Really it's not Infinity Slayer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was. <laughs> Halo 4. So this I'm so curious about. Your personal AI is going to tell you to you know get that thing back to base and give you some like. Moment that's so moment cool. Updates. Yeah, I guess people need to know on huh, that if you have the flag, you have to take that back to the base. AI and each one of those are different voices. So that players can find the one that fits their the AI is what really I was really talking about. Yeah, they they add to the sense of like me. There's another I area we can monetize. Yeah, being yeah. More important and, and for us and so cynical, Jesse. No, no, I mean <laughs> it's, that's definitely why it's there. I'm just saying it's smart. The Halo universe. The body of customization content. That as long as it's not like grading. One ensures that there will be millions Holy crap, that's a lot of customization. As long as I can get yip yap the destroyer. On the battlefield that includes things like. Armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Yeah, we gotta fill out a hundred levels of this battle pass every month. Yeah, this looks really good. There. Vehicles mm -hmm. have a have a huge pool of customizations. Actually, too. seeing like the we UI and the, oh in my god, game. players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also this is what the next blog the post is going to be about, I believe. The suit. We want the mm -hmm. Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type. Oh, that looks so nice. As yeah. well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us a unique prosthetics is really cool. to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player first. Oh, if you can do each so leg, like each that, appendage, yeah. there's no then. Yeah. Loot in this. There's oh, no yeah, it's her. I understand what it's the blowback was regarding the coding system. Well, exactly I mean, it, it's still people technically... People were just flexible yeah. and we yeah. have a having of just two colors to choose from. Yeah, yeah exactly. Battle people battle were just reacting battle without battle looking yeah. at what the actual verbiage was. That never happens with Halo. Battle Pass, let's see. In future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes. Think you guys are a couple well seconds ahead. Battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards are single source. Yes, that's okay. what they do with MCC. MCC yeah. Nothing goes away; it's always there. If you can unlock something yeah. in the battle pass, so it's just like MCC, just monetize this time around. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game. Oh, that's interesting. Through playing the game. That's actually really All cool. Customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce huh. new components, new looks, new games. I should, I should be taking players, notes. God damn it. New opportunities to earn. God, that looks yeah, like the same Anyone else taking notes? Seen, uh, the samurai already. That's samurai. one of our events. I've got some notes. Ooh, and that's that looks be something good. That it's Shinobi, right? Through gameplay I like the samurai look. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It looks awesome. <laughs> it, looks it is pretty really good. <laughs> it, it's completely not Halo, but I still know. like it. <laughs> well, I mean, we've had Hayabusa since 3. Halo multiplayer yeah, has been... Well, that's different. Hayabusa belongs on Xbox for crying out loud. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll give a pass there. Ninjas. Ninjas always roll. Able to get the biggest yeah, speaking from experience. Everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression 
carries from one platform to the next. You know what? Getting our game to people be look a little bit less PC tired in this. Yes, time. we looked more tired, I feel, than they do at this point. Really just <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Joe Staten looks game. more tired in this than he did on like stage like yesterday. Joe always looks tired. It's just, like, <laughs> just Joe's look. Like, like, some people have PCs. I feel right, Joe. Joe looked yesterday. Let them be friends. Oh, wait. You're the... Okay, this is really interesting. I want to know more about this. To be a Spartan. The Academy is a place that you can go uh, with an MP Academy. to yeah. kind get of these bots into the Forge it's mode, please. Let me do fun stuff with them. No kidding. The controls and also That's people up. who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking. It's a series of experiences, both a tutorial to get started for the first time, weapon drills to practice with specific items, and also training mode that you can use. I wonder if this is their Forge. Get one uh, explore in the terms of uh, for players who are new to Halo, no, no, this let's is definitely help them learn what this universe is about. So no, this is just this is a training. About. I mean, it's basically no. I mean, like, was it built through Forge? The like, are those the Forge textures? For now, almost twenty years, so that we when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think that's awesome. a great idea. Our goal with bots mm -hmm. has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of. This reminds me so much of the combat simulator from the original Perfect Dark. Huh. Partnering with our players, where you could customize what kind of bots the AI drops, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. I wonder if those a AIs will be evolving over time, or if they'll start taking any um, human patterns. I was going to say, if it's like Dravatars. Like Dravatars, yep. Make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge okay, or the content when? that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers Today. go after the game. <laughs> That'd be a show announcement. This would be our shortest your podcast. Your yeah. yeah. That yeah. We'd be like, yeah. we're out. Sorry, <laughs> we want to invite you to a Halo well, it's going to be a five-minute podcast. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection great. at launch. And what's going to be there for our fans. <laughs> and this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already. And just I don't know why, but that really dude always reminds me of cops from Terminator out. 2. New maps, new modes, <laughs> new ways to customize your Spartan. So yeah, Samurai Armor is called Armor Armor. Just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently. And that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the mm. years so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to the Road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Man, this looks really good. Yeah, it just looks fantastic. I look forward to launch in 2022. <laughs> Jesse, what is up with you this morning? You're such a cynical <laughs> bastard. He moves like that. They moves committed to 2021 again last night. Did they really? I, I was, yeah. yeah. I was wondering Yeah, at the show, that. he was like, the yeah. season one and the campaign will launch oh, together. Oh, there, yeah. Holiday. Now yeah, they put the date on there because... Um, Oh no! Did they? Yeah, they said three? holiday. Too. That was on there. Yeah, they, okay. said they only said holiday. They didn't yeah. give okay. a month or anything. Thing. Same thing. Yeah, just holiday. Gotcha. Uh, December twenty fifth. <laughs> and we still had complaints that oh they're not going to launch at the same time, and I'm like they literally just said that in the forums. I mean we were getting complaints, <laughs> but that never happened. Okay, right? I'm gonna just I'm think I'll just have the video play on uh, repeat. Um, okay. Me look so good. While we while we talk over that, uh, I did not take notes. I probably should have though. Um, how do you want to do this, Obi? You want to start from the beginning? That's, that's very usual. What you know? What might be interesting is if we could replay it and uh, Wait, like pause it, pause it as pause it as we go through. Yep, hundred percent. I can do that. Give me half a second. Da, 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 da. Wait, I'll pull up the a um, lot of this live stuff so I can go along with you. So we're all just going to watch the stream uh, but through... Uh, yeah, okay. through the through the theme of Augur. Yep. Actually, it's actually the same URL. Interesting. <clears throat> actually, I just got to click, click the reap. <laughs> the brother button. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually, uh, actually more than I expected, though, to be honest. When I heard it was a 12-minute video, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think it'd be this packed. So oh, did you guys read the blog? Thing. Yeah, a lot of good information on there, too. Yeah. Yeah, this is basically just, I mean, everything they talked about is essentially just what the blog had, just in video form. So yeah. if you have that blog, we can, we can also reference that, because that's what I took notes from. And um, pretty much everything that was in there is... 
Yeah, so I think, um, by the way, welcome everybody who's joining us with the You Had Me at Halo podcast. Uh, we're doing mm -hmm. a little impromptu podcast today, so uh, obviously try, trying to do a little bit of a live stream. Uh, I think there's a lot of information to absorb there, so we're going to go back through that. Also, uh, we were planning on diving into what we saw yesterday, and yep. there's, yeah, there's, there's just been a lot of Halo news in, in the, the last... 24 hours so we're going to do our best to get through some of it <laughs> uh, i guess we'll just go around really quickly everybody um introduce yourselves i, I guess we'll just start with you mr uh, soul blazer or so aka hey, Ursel. hey guys this is How's definitely our pretty good this is definitely our earliest podcast i mean 10 30 is not really that early <laughs> or, sorry 11 a.m shouldn't be that early but you know yesterday was e3 so yeah yeah i think uh I, most of us are in short sleep with everything we've been trying to do here. So then we got uh, Jesse, a.k.a. Mr. Don Cambesa. Say hello. hello. That was a great <laughs> show. And Halo was a very good part of it yesterday. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Mr. Nadian. Uh, Daniel, a.k.a. Mr. Nadian. I can't get anything straight this morning. Top of the morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, still we a wee bit early. It's a, uh, whatever. Uh, doing great. <laughs> then we got Mike, aka Mister Kage Maru. How's it going, man? Hey, friends. How you guys doing? And we have on camera for the first time, uh, yeah, Mister Mister Austin, aka uh, Proven. How's it going? Doing well. Uh, excited to talk about. We we just watched. It seemed like there was a lot to um, discuss. So I'm that's, excited. That's all of us now, right? On camera, we we finally got the whole team. Yes. Finally. Yeah, finally. And, and um, episode twenty one only took twenty one episodes. They can they can see how tired we all look today. Yeah, so, yeah we we all look like Mr. Stanton did yesterday on camera. So <laughs> uh, he looked like he was pulling an all nighter when he got up there. Um, all right, so I, I guess before we dive into this one, do we want to go ahead and start with some of our feelings yesterday, or or like uh, I mean we're kind of impromptuing this right now. So yep, uh, that's definitely um, an option. Uh, give me a second. Did you set this to ultra low latency? Because we're definitely. I did set it to ultra low, but you're right. The stream is like <laughs> ten or so seconds, maybe a little more. Yeah, so seconds. I'll get used to it for um. Yeah. For chat, this will be a little slower on the uh, pickup. Um. No, well, it's kind of weird. Yeah, because the stream is behind, but OBS is still obviously. Um... Oh wow! We have Halo in the chat. I didn't even notice. Oh, it's saying, don't buy our game. It is trash. Copy of GTA. <laughs> also, lie. you have to pay $10 to play a match, and I'm going to play God. Listen, Halo, so, why don't you tell us that in a sir. super chat, though? I, I, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jesse, stop reading stuff uh, out. Trolling like, outside of regular chats just gets uh, you hide user on this channel. But super <laughs> chats, you get to stick around. At least, at least for a second while we read it out, then we'll hide you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, let's go around. And this is our first show in a few weeks, and you know, obviously there wasn't a, there wasn't much of a news drop uh, leading up into E3, and then it looks like we've just got a ton over the last yeah. twenty four hours. Um, but really, what I what I wanted to 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 go to focus on first was just to go around uh, the table and just give everybody give your kind of your impressions about the uh what was shown at yesterday's e3 um just kind of your general impressions like what were the things that you think uh 343 was really trying to you know convey it looks like they went through a few different things right they they mm. started off kind of kind of showing us a little bit of what the campaign's uh environments might look like uh then they went on to some a story some story beats and then they pivoted over to the multiplayer which is obviously was the the bulk of the focus and it looks like it will be uh for this week um so i guess let me see who's mike are you ready or are you working on something <laughs> you look busy uh yeah yeah um <laughs> now go ahead go and go with someone else for right now um, <laughs> all right all right I, sorry <laughs> I, i'd like the teacher calling on the kid it looks like they're not paying attention sorry uh <laughs> Jesse, why don't we get start off with you, man? Uh, so, what was what was your general impressions? Like, what do you think three four three was really trying to hit home yesterday? You know, with with really all three beats, I guess. I mean, you can talk about any of it and just give your general I, overall impressions. I could talk about any of it. I'm an adult. Um, 
<laughs> mainly so for the the campaign it was pretty obvious look we know everyone really likes pretty graphics and graphics are always prettiest in a cutscene. we're going to give you this nice overview hey by the way this these levels are enormous that's why it's not going to be like this smaller third person action game that fo- that's 30 frames per second that focuses entirely on graphics over gameplay and everything it's going to be this huge environment running at 60 frames per second there's kind of a limit on how those will look on $500 machines and um so we'll show you a cutscene where we can put the best looking models possible in because it's this tight little confined dark space and you get to see the best looking version of chief and yep. I- i'm pretty sure that cutscene is probably exactly from where discover hope ended yeah. and yeah. the doors opening and then he's going out which is really cool the only discrepancy see... is he, he doesn't have the assault rifle right really yeah yeah that that's the weird part <laughs> he takes the assault yeah, so, rifle so it might not be a one for one because like they said that's the opening of the game but you they know, didn't say that opening can't change someone a made a really interesting point on reddit or i don't know where reddit where you know how we uh the pilot mentions uh, you only have one bullet what are you gonna do Right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like the thing where the pilot gives you his gun, like similar to, you know, uh, Halo C's opening where you get the pistol. But that one bullet, maybe he's saving it because, you know, didn't want to starve to death or whatnot. Well, I'm just he saying. He did, uh, oh, him. Yeah. The he, pilot. He had the one bullet for mm-hmm. himself. Yeah. It's a, a pretty grim open. Yep. I, I really like the yep. the brute power whenever he's moving. Then he moves. slows and he's like extremely gentle whenever he comes across a Marine. Yeah, um, floating in yeah, space. Really cool. Then he's, then he sees yeah, the the banished, and he's just like throwing them around and pissed. But yeah, the the, the animation work was phenomenal, and the um, the textures. If you rewatch it in 4K, which you yeah, can only do on their difference. VOD, and eventually far off in it's the future when they finally not, process it's still our not video. Processed. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they, and they Thanks say it can take up to a day. But yeah. Oh. So, yeah, because um, Mike went through a screen capture, clipped the single player campaign because they didn't put it up on their YouTube page for some reason. But it should be 4K for us soon. So, right. Sometime. <laughs> but yeah, going so, that and then, yeah, then having the chop off into multiplayer was, I think, the right way to do it. They've shown the they've shown the campaign enough. And I think with this type of stuff and with, you know, all the production stuff they already have. I really think we'll see more the rest of the year, so you don't have to have this enormous chunk of your show again be the Halo campaign. Yeah. Yeah, so overall, Jesse, and, and, then, and then I'll move around the table. So, like, your overall thoughts, like, uh, what, what was the thing that you, was there, like, anything that really stuck out to you as, like, maybe the highlight of the, the Halo portion of the E3? Um, was, did, did anything, like, jump the, out the to you as a surprise? Hit really hard because i've never done a ton of halo multiplayer like i've played it but this looked so much more like just that base shooting gameplay i liked and i would play it and i'd enjoy it and i liked it quite a bit in five but there was something about the scale and the the different options in this where there's just so many different things you can do and that yeah. ridiculous destiny looking ricochet weapon like in the deflect when he deflects, <laughs> my favorite part was when he deflected the friggin' plasma shot and then one shot mm-hmm. the guy. Yeah, friggin that, that seemed like a, him. it seemed like a nice balance between armor lock and yeah. just taking one it time to the use, chin, right? And you right? gotta time it too. Yeah, like I wonder if you have to aim it. Like it won't work if someone's behind you. It's on your arm. Oh yeah, so, no, for sure. That's I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate that, Justin. And I started with you, you know, I know you're more like the campaign and lore guy, you know, you're you're into the books, the campaign and everything. And so yesterday being more, you know, with only a tad bit of the uh, the story elements and things like that I was curious, kind of how it hit for you. I, I did want to um, move on and, and see like, uh, so, so let's let's talk your thoughts in general. Um, yeah. um, in terms of the campaign, one thing for sure is I always want more Halo. So uh, at, when the show ended, I'm like, I mean, okay, great, solid show, but give me more Halo. And I'm happy we got that this morning. Um, but also, I want to see more of the campaign, man. I'm not worried yeah. about it. They have next year. The little glimpse they showed of, uh, of, the, of the Zeta Halo looks pretty good. You saw the Marines walking around. You saw, you know, the Brutes walking around in the other shot. I'm not worried. I just want to see more. Like, it's, yeah. I, I guess they're focusing on the, on the multiplayer right now. But I don't know. 
Was there anything that jumped out to you? Oh, like, uh, uh, either either yeah, positive. Yeah, one thing for or, sure is uh, the texture. Any concerns? Uh, Chief's right. suit. I mean, I'm not sure okay. if uh, I've mentioned it. People have mentioned it before, but they're like, hey, this looks just as yeah. good as the Discover Hope trailer. I think it looks better. Like, I legitimately think his armor, the textures, the cutscene in general looks better than what we saw in that Discover Hope trailer where people were like, it's never hitting that, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I, I do wonder how well... Yeah, because like his armor, there's more detail. There's more uh, scuffs. There's You can see like right now what's playing mm -hmm. or what I'm seeing playing like... There's more scuffs, there's more dents yep. and stuff. And I wonder how well that's going to translate to last-gen consoles. Because the the default, what they showed in the Discover Hope, already looked amazing. And it, I, I think everyone, at least me, I was so happy with how, how it looked. Like, that armor just looked amazing back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Where I didn't even think that, like he was drifting in space because yeah. he just, like, he, that was the aftermath of a large battle. So it makes sense that there's going to be wear and tear on his armor. Yeah, that it's not going to be like pristine condition. Yeah, where he was like all pristine in the yeah. actual like original trailer. So, so Mike, this is. Have you um have you ever seen play uh, potato versions of a game? Like someone will take the Witcher yeah. and they'll yeah. like go into files and make every yeah they'll make every oh, yeah. setting as low as possible. That's what it's going to look like on last gen. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're not going to get that. You know what? I'm Here's the thing. Level, if right. that were the case, I would be happy be <coughs> because that means that they're really pushing mm -hmm. pushing the envelope on on new gen consoles. I mean, cutscenes wise, I, even I really don't suspect that to yeah. be the case. Yeah, even yeah, gears look really, really good on the original <laughs> Xbox. You know what I mean? Xbox One. So I I think the cutscenes will still look pretty solid even on the Xbox One. Yeah. And then, well, that you was can scale one of the, a lot of that down. Well, Mike, that was one of the feedbacks too. So, so last year, you know, after they played the 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 demo at E3, you know, what, uh, there was obviously there was a, there was quite a few uh, <laughs> there's quite a few complaints. But one of the one of the one the the complaints that that the developers actually acknowledged a hearing was how kind of cl clean and plasticky everything was looking. And I, it did sound like they were going to try to address like the art when it came to that aspect of the game. Uh, so I think that was something they were, you know, obviously they were demonstrating that pretty well in that in yesterday's cutscene to kind of show that, yeah, now they're showing some more scuffs and things to make it look a little more worn, a little bit less like a toy, I guess. You, you remember last year, a lot, a lot of people said that some of the models looked looked like toys, you yeah. know, both the yeah. vehicles and, you know, the enemies. Uh, and, and that didn't really go over really well. So it, it does th it does appear that the uh, developers have heard that and made some adjustments to the art style based on that. So, no, that was a good call out. I think that's a big, um, a, you know, that that's an important call out. And the, just the overall tone of it uh, did seem to be a little bit more serious as well. But I'll, let me let me continue to go around. Well, so overall, Mike, uh, I, before I before I do move on. Uh, like, was what was the thing that maybe jumped out to you most, uh, got you most excited, or maybe most worried, based uh, on what you saw yesterday? The, you know, what little they showed of the campaign, even if it was, I mean, really, to me, the drone flyover was almost more revealing or more important mm -hmm. than the um, mm -hmm. than the cutscenes, because, I mean, it, that looked great. Like, that looked, uh, that was a marked improvement over um what we saw last year and not only that but i don't know if they purposely picked this but that was like an a kind of an overcast type uh, setting that they showed and those are typically the 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 hardest type of uh lighting conditions to make things look good um mm -hmm. you know it, it either like direct sunlight or you know darkness and stuff like it those are typically easier to work around but like something that's that overcast in the middle because like last year the demo looked it's best when either the enemies or chief was in direct sunlight because then you can see like the light bouncing off of the textures and you get more of that detail. It's whenever he was inside or within shadow that, you know, a, a lot of that detail was lost and, yeah. and that plastic look came out. So like, yeah, I definitely really liked the overhead. Um, it, it's interesting because you do see some things in that, um, that dry flow drown, drone fl flyover where you do see some of the, um, uh, what do they call it? The um, Minecraft columns. You see that like <laughs> as it comes right over the edge of the cliff and there's more detail on those. They yeah. Seem, those I, seem I like that. more roughed up. And and uh, and then I also thought it was interesting how 
down below it looks like down below it looks like um it looks like the marines took over an outpost but then you go up over the cliffside and there's a bunch of brutes right like right above them um and so i thought that yeah. was interesting and right i also next did like other. how yeah yeah they're like neighbors and then i also liked how when the um when the uh pelican flies over the brutes they react to it and like and they're just like all these like nice little details mm. that are in the game and you see like the fog and mist and the and the 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 level of detail when the camera kind of pans like wide over it, it it reveals some things like one how far the draw distance is for like yes. things like yeah. trees and stuff like that yeah. but then also you don't see like grass but you do see like a good like kind of material type grass texture the only thing that i'm kind of concerned or disappointed on and who knows maybe there's not supposed to be enemies there is that like with a game like halo infinite especially with systems like these new gen consoles i i like jesse mentioned scope earlier and mm. you know one of the things with previous halo games they always try to like make it seem like there's this big vast war going on around you but they they didn't really always sell that well mm. Mm. and and um maybe halo reach was the best that they pulled that off i'd say but um i, I would like to see enemies in the far far distance like if you're able to have like a zoom function on your visor and like right where the pelican is flying over and like I, I think there's a crack in the in the ring right there you you can see the enemies you know um going on the routines and stuff in the far distance like that's one of the things that has always sold halo in the past mm -hmm. where you don't look like you look like you're interrupting them you, it doesn't look like they just spawned right before they entered the you entered the room. Yeah, and it right. really sold that that um, I, I guess systemic world. Um, so yeah, like that the the campaign stuff, the 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 trailer, all of that looked amazing to me. The multiplayer also surprisingly looked. I mean, I'm more of a campaign and story person, like Jesse. Uh, I, I play multiplayer, but only with friends. I never play it by myself. I think I can actually see myself playing this by myself. It, it <laughs> looks really, really, it looks amazingly good. The only concern I have is uh, the grappling hook looked OP. It looked overpowered. Because <laughs> you're able to like pull things towards you, pull fusion coils. In multiplayer you know, campaign. grapple up. I'm sorry? In multiplayer campaign, sorry. In the multiplayer. multiplayer like you're able to like grapple up to a, an aircraft and, and take that over. You're able to pull fusion coils. You're able to pull weapons. I mean, I... I I think it was assumed that that was limited use equipment. You know, you have like three uses or so many uses. Um, and I didn't pay attention enough in any of the trailers to see if there's a number counter that goes down. But uh, other than that, yeah, no, I, 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 I'm extremely happy. Uh, as someone that wanted it, them to focus on the campaign and just do a, a multiplayer trailer, the fact that they probably they did more so of a campaign trailer and put more of a focus on the yeah. campaign or the multiplayer i'm still happy like I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm still extremely happy with what they've shown yeah I, 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 you, a lot of really really good thoughts and i think mike you you know you helped set up probably some of the rest of the show we'll come back around uh just and just so everybody in the panel knows like these these areas are going to come back around and really just focus on them as a group but uh like for the, for this one you know get your overall thoughts but i think those are some really good ones especially in regards to the campaign because uh that was one of the things that jumped out to me too and i'll touch on that here in a minute but uh but daniel let's let's get your some of your thoughts on it like uh you know any anything different from the panel or like what were the things that really stuck out to you most yesterday well for starters um what i was gonna say earlier while we were talking about how it's gonna look on xbox one consoles um i, I think it's pretty timely that we um during that virtual press briefing and then and then you know what the public was able to see from that that they they directly mentioned streaming to consoles. So I would not be surprised if we have some element of of uh, Halo, maybe not now, but maybe in two years when they drop old hardware and, and really focus on beefing up that engine, if that's how older consoles will be able to play the game is through streaming. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing that I wanted to touch on since we, you know, I didn't get to earlier. Um, but I mean, for me, the the... This was kind of everything I wanted. Um, we got a pretty wonderful cinematic that, you know, 
it, the cinematic cinematic did everything that it should have from a gameplay standpoint in that it showed you a lot of the new elements you know there seems to be a lot more weight to your movement there seems to be you know the the usage of the grappling hook uh, the setup for the uh, carbon copy of of cortana which yep. seems exactly like what um what we um, discussed on our book podcast about what was actually recovered from uh, the Halsey's lab on Reach in uh, Shadows of Reach. Um, so that was fantastic. And it was also nice to see some hearkening back to, you know, like when when there's that moment where, like what Jesse mentioned earlier, when Chief comes across the fallen Marine and he becomes um, somber, it seems like he's slowed, he's, he's paying mm-hmm. respects in a sort of way. That's hearkening back to elements from halo 4's story where cortana That's directly asks point. how you know which one of us is more of a machine and it seems like we're finally seeing chief become a little bit more of a humanized character yeah um so there were some really cool callbacks in in the cinematic you know i mean the thing that people need to remember too is that cinematics in uh halo's engine um, they're all in engine, so they're not pre-rendered. So that's that's an important thing. Yes, it's not going to look as good in gameplay, but it's still the fact that it's in engine is awesome. But it also means that we're going to get something close. Well, um, just to touch was, on that real quick, I think it's interesting that they're probably going to go right in the gameplay though, if the yeah. rumors are correct on the, yeah. how, how they're going to do the camera system. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems a lot like um, like that scene in the Horizon Five demo where they're showing you know the 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 individual needles and then immediately goes into you driving the car that's kind of what it feels like they're trying to do a lot of because um a that's a a neat little way to show off velocity architecture right Mm -hmm. um but on top of that it's just a it's just a very cool um you know small separation between cinematics and, and gameplay um and and you know pretty much everything that mike was saying about that um that campaign overview that we got with just the flyover I mean, I was I was extremely happy with how that turned out. I mean, you can tell the work has been done. The team is proud of what they've got, so they're they're you know not not shy to show it. Um, kind of like what we were mentioning earlier from the multiplayer side. Like I'm a physics guy, so you know yeah. one of the greatest yeah. things about you know like I'm not a huge Halo Three is not my favorite Halo multiplayer. <laughs> um, personally, it's still up there, but like one of the best things about Halo Three are the physics and mm-hmm. and how you apply those to the sandbox, mm-hmm. and it seems like we're getting a lot more of that again. You know, with yeah. that that's that um, grenade sword catch and um, some of the other elements that we saw in the in, in the trailer. Um, so from what they showed yesterday, that that was that was my main highlights was that uh, it, it feel and it looks like Halo, like it looks like a modern Halo. Um, you know, the sound effects I noticed were a little bit different. So I, I still think there's going to be some elements that, that, um, are going to have that unique three, four, three ism to it. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I came away I just very hope happy. they're distinct. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah. the, that's yeah. the only thing that was kind of lost with like Halo four, like you, with the bungee halos, you knew when you heard a plasma pistol to a plasma rifle to a kneeler without even seeing it. Whereas... I would say more Halo Five than Four, because Four has still had some pretty distinct um, weapon weapon sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're five, right. There. Five was definitely a lot more like kind of homogenized. I guess would be yeah. the yeah. best yeah. word. Yeah. Maybe that's it... it's probably five that I'm thinking of actually, because I played very little of Halo Four <laughs> multiplayer. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I think I think you hit on some really good points, Daniel, and and, and I don't and the one of them I don't know that we're going to come back around to too much, but I, but it is some so it's something I want to touch on now is what you said about the uh, the visuals and how that stuff carries over from you know from the from the cutscene to the gameplay. I, I guess the, for the the one reason to me that seems like a pertinent thing to to keep in mind is that that you know the the assets that you're seeing do exist. <laughs> so you you know in in over time you know obviously with optimization and things like that you hope that they can get as close to that as possible within right. the game. But we do know the assets exist. And and one of the pushbacks you know and even as I you know got, got another podcast and, and you know kind of argues through about the, the the art style 
style, you know, I, I think that this, I think this art style is going to hit a lot better once people get to see it with complete textures, which we didn't see last year. Right. So right. Uh, I think that is uh, definitely a good point. So uh, let me, let's go, go over to, to, uh, to Proven's thoughts real quick, and then we'll come back around um, to everybody. We'll start focusing on s singling out different aspects of of the uh, what we saw yesterday uh proven what was your overall thoughts like what really stuck out to you like is there anything that's most excited you from um from the from the initial showing yesterday um yeah i, I think the camp the trailer that we got was really good like i honestly enjoyed it more than what we got last year mm. um there, there was i really like the um like the thing that stood out to me most was i think the chief's armor design is like my favorite i've ever seen like before i've always liked halo 2 and halo 3 but this one i think is honestly the best um because it, it kind of the colors are good but it, he's also not as like skinny as he was in 2 he kind of <laughs> has like the mass that he has in like halo 4 and 5 <laughs> he looks yeah. like he's been doing his squats right yeah yeah he is <laughs> a he thick boy really now good. um yeah he's but got the, that uh, cake yeah. <laughs> uh yeah but the thing obviously i'm more of a multiplayer person so what we saw yesterday and more of what we just saw a couple of minutes ago, there's a lot to, t to discuss. I'm excited to get into that. All right, man. Yeah. So, so I, I think a lot, everybody here has kind of covered, you know, so when I'm coming, when it's my turn here, it's, I'm going to just repeat what a lot of people have said already. Uh, I, I will kind of reiterate last year, you know, after the show, I was, pretty disappointed with what i saw not not necessarily the gameplay but just kind of the overall look and everything um you know i, I was one of those that 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 demo kind of brought down the show for me um and i came into this one you know it, it, listening to some of the the more tempered um you know expectations coming into the show i was kind of ready for it to maybe not not you know um hit all the notes it needed to and i came away pretty pretty positive from yesterday um and, and maybe that is just come some of the those expectations that were set but you know everything from what they showed with that campaign map and i and i like you pointed that out mike the the what they showed with the uh the landscape you know knowing that all that area is going to be dynamically lit right like there's going to be different times of days and things like that and that adds you know just a different element we've never really had in a halo before you just look at that and you're like man there's a lot of sandbox there and so for me like that's the potential is like the thing that really really came to light with that and um so i was excited about that if i did have a, any concern it's that you know when you see that uh, like you were saying, Mike, that's, I don't know why I'm reiterating you right now, but when you see the fact that uh, that there is only a couple a couple enemies out there, the one the one kind of th point I've made when I've discussed what we've seen of Halo so far with 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 others is you know with the with the art design being a little more simplified, it does allow them to really kind of bolster the amount of things that are going on in that sandbox, and I really do hope that they you know that they can. Hit, really leverage that, right? Like, and I know they're they're going to be working on Jaguar cores as well, uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out and, and if they just really dumb down the the, uh, the last gen versions, which I guess I'm not as concerned about, especially in the campaign. Uh, they can always stream it if they <laughs> if if that's the case. But you know, I, I I am you know really hoping that they take advantage of that, that they take advantage of like all this extra space and you know really give us maybe what we would have envisioned, you know, back when we played Halo CE, uh, what the next evolution of that might've looked like, you know, generations down the road and, and, and finally bring that to, to fruition with, you know, large scale battles. I did really like the, the thing that really stuck out to me yesterday as well was the, the physics and, in in the, uh, and just some of the extra toys in the sandbox, you can see that this is going to be a lot more dynamic. I thought that, uh, it, it did look like the multiplayer seemed to have, um, you know, there's been this like back and forth between the the, the classics and the, the the modern multiplayer gamers. And I, what I really did like about uh, what we saw yesterday was 
it, it does look like 343 is going with their own identity, if that makes sense. Like they are giving some to the the classics and and you can feel that there's some modern elements, especially to like the, the shooting. And when I look at that, it looks it looks like a 343's, you know, like hit detection and things like that. It looks really snappy. Um, it, it looks like it's a little faster paced. Right. So I, I it, it's kind of like their own identity right now. I, and they're, and they're kind of, uh, it, it's not, I don't think it's all one way or the other with, with the modern versus the classic, but well, I guess we'll touch on that. Um, when we come back around, I, I do want to give a shout out to my, my friend here, Enrique, uh, Brat from the basement radio arcade podcast. He says, Hey everyone, uh, OBM make Halo great again. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, um, and, and, and me and Enrique debate a lot on it. So he's more of a campaign guy himself, and he he definitely want he definitely wants that more of that sizzle. So you know we'll we'll get back and we'll get we'll we'll come back and talk about that because you know I, there's definitely um, you know. We, we know that throughout throughout the community, there's people. Everybody has different priorities when it comes to Halo, you know. And we just kind of talked about it as we went through the panel. You know, Jesse is more of a campaign and lore guy. He actually reads. Uh, he has read all the books. <laughs> uh, Soul, you're with him. I there, went to right? school and I learned how to read, unlike the rest. Yeah, of them. You know, I, <laughs> I, I don't. Too. I don't play video games to read, right? No, I'm just kidding. I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have time anymore. Um, you know, me personally, and, and you know, Proven mentioned it too. Like I, I put in. Um, probably over t between Master Chief Collection and Halo 5, getting close to 2,500 hours, you know, this last generation in, in multiplayer. So, you know, there's definitely, you know, with everybody, depending on what what's, Everybody has different priorities when it comes to the game, and I think depending on your priorities, you're gonna you're looking for different things in terms of graphics, in terms of sandbox, things like that. So I think it's gonna be kind of fun to to go back around this panel as we kind of focus on the different areas and see you know more specific when we kind of really dial in on the different areas, like specifically everybody feels about them. Um, oh, let's go to Mr. Blast the Base, uh, six dollar super chat. Why do you why do you like grapple jacks if they don't even taste like grapples? We just do. <laughs> was that from the uh, was that from the trailer? I don't remember. <laughs> it's probably an apple jacks reference, right? <laughs> I think. I, I, mean, I uh, assume so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to go back around to the panel, uh, and we're going to start off. So we're going to kind of go in order. And I think the first thing, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the first thing that we looked at was that sandbox. So uh, I touched on some of it. Mike's kind of touched on it. Did uh, when you guys saw the big open map? Did and any any other thoughts to you in terms of either how it looked, uh, any kind of thoughts for for you know maybe gameplay potential things like that? So let's go ahead and start with you this time. Like. It, what would you like to uh, add to that aspect of it? Um, so the thing with the, with the open shot was it looked good. And for me, that means it didn't look great. It didn't look mind-blowing. It didn't look like, oh my right. God, this is super amazing graphics. But it looked good. Or rather, I should say it didn't look bad, which I think is enough. Halo Infinite <laughs> is, at the end of the day, a cross-gen game, right? <laughs> um, if you know what I mean. Uh, it doesn't need to look as good as like Forza Horizon 5, for example, which to be honest is kind of, after seeing that trailer, everything looks bad now. Which is also yeah. a cross-gen <laughs> game. <laughs> which is also right. <laughs> yeah, But it's not right. 60 when, uh, it, when it looks that good, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't think anyone should be able to complain about how, we, how that shot looked. You know what I mean? And if they do, they're expecting something Halo is not and almost has never been, barring the exception of Halo 4, which had some really serious gameplay limitations you know what i mean yeah yep. I mean, that's the thing i keep pointing out right like anybody who, who who's replayed these halos over and over again uh I, I know a lot of people love love for story but but uh yeah it, game design wise it was it didn't feel very halo but yeah keep going so oh uh, no that, that, that was totally it i kind of suck at right. concluding so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 okay <laughs> i'm still working uh, on changing the videos in the background and yeah. stuff while we talk all right <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your multitasking yeah, abilities. No that is something this is... I can't I can't do very well anymore. Oh, it's not uh, me. It's the fact that I have three monitors. That does most of the legwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I really the older I get, the less I can walk and chew gum at the same time, which is uh, you know that's a, which is why even when I play Halo, I usually just focus on one thing. <laughs> and uh, you know I, I'm not a very diverse uh, diverse teammate. Uh, Jesse, how about you, man? Um, 
A any additional thoughts? Like I know me and Mike, have, me, Mike, and Soul have already said a few things on that. Any additional thoughts to like the what you saw with the spread out, out environments? It's pretty much what I always wanted, which was that initial what people have in their heads of what Halo CE was, where Halo CE had for the time nice large areas that were mm. these they had specific enemy layouts and there was but in the end it was you just ran at them and shot them and killed them, whereas this has more structure. Mm -hmm. There's this big open hub, you know, not open world. But you get these hub environments. I don't know how many they'll have, like, depending on their size. If they're enormous, you might get 10. But they just oh, are littered with things you can go and keep doing, which is a replayability factor that is enormous. And it was everything I wanted. And seeing, like, that little camp with the smoke. And so there's visual indicators letting you know, even when you're not on the map, which is cool to have, is I can just look in the distance, I can see there's smoke coming up there, and I'm just going to head there for now because I just want to go see what that is, and maybe i got to go save a bunch of Marines and I get a vehicle for doing that, or, like, mm. basic, easy unlocks, and then having a way to call in vehicles, and then having the game react to what I am using. So this camp is easier on foot, and it's really hard with, like, a scorpion. Like, that type of stuff is unbelievably exciting to me. And that yeah. open area really showed what those possibilities are going to be yeah and, and you gave some really good details i mean when, you know when i when it when i kind of say the all-encompassing sandbox i know you want to ban me from that word and and which would force me to be detailed like you <laughs> in terms of what that means but uh but I, I you know you bring up some good points too though like hopefully you know when we're playing this it isn't going to be like an ubisoft thing and uh, ubisoft thing and, and where you're chasing you know icons and it's it's really more an organic exploration uh so that's something we don't know a lot about right now we did see some icons last year so we'll have to kind of wait and see but yeah that potential right uh, and that's what it, that's what it keeps screaming uh it screams potential that still needs to execute on it uh mr mr uh, nadian um and it, additional thoughts from you know what what others have said already uh no i mean that's pretty much right on with jesse I, I will say that they did specifically address uh in one of our um you know halo updates that we that we covered that they specifically mentioned that it would not be a uh, iconathon you know there will not yeah. be a, a ton of you know it's, it's not going to be an ubisoft game so i think anybody who is worried about that still i mean if you didn't get it months ago when, when they mentioned it, I, I don't think that's anything that you need to be concerned about. Um, you know, I think that having a little bit more freedom again, and I, and I think we're, you know, we always hearken back to CE, right? Everybody says that, but when you actually look at, you know, if you were to, if you were to model those maps on a 3d plane, you would see they're not as open as people like to think they are. I mean, one or two levels are absolutely, but I think, this is going to be what CE actually promised in that, you know, you see something and you can theoretically go there. Um, and the fact that we're able to tra traverse sections uh, through space, um, as mentioned previously, I think, you know, what we saw in that, in that drone flyover footage is, is everything that, um, that I think most of the, the the original CE fans were wanting, and I think for those of us who just want that that modernization as well, I mean, the gameplay that we saw through multiplayer showed that 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 is very much the case. That we're going to get a a classic um, Halo that that melds mo modernity pretty well. Nice, yeah, nice call out. You know, any of you guys remember like the initial Halo CE when you first uh, land on the ring, and mm -hmm. it's really, really quiet. And then you you encounter that that elite and a couple grunts, I think, is what it was, right? Like the dropship like, what, comes in. Yeah, and yeah. So like once you cro once you cross over, and and I remember like th that was maybe the first time that it hit me with Halo, like that this plays that this really plays different when you know you I got his shield down, he runs back behind the you know the get cover, and and it was like oh like there was like that little cat and mouse thing going on. I like I look around these environments and I see like all the the trees, the rocks, and stuff like that, and that's kind of like the first thing that comes to mind for me. It it, it really is like all of those opportunities to kind of uh, to kind of really build those 
what is it you call it the 30 seconds of fun or things like that that they really focused on so yeah I, again you guys are just bringing these things to mind as you're talking um austin um what, what about you man like any any additional thoughts i know i'm sorry like going going to you last every time it's like everybody takes up everything <laughs> but you literally uh, just said don't call on me for a few minutes what yeah mm-hmm. yeah um i mean I, I to touch on like what a few guys oh. actually just said though um yeah, like I, I think because I, I think when people look at CE and they talk about the open levels, I think they're probably mostly referring to Halo and the um. Oh God, what is the island level? Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Silent cartographer. Yeah, thank you. The silent okay. cartographer. I mean, those <laughs> were really, I think, the most open levels <laughs> in terms of just how you can approach things and and like New Mombasa, you could say. New Mombasa. Oh, wait, from Halo yeah, the 2? Map? Yeah. Oh, are you talking about just oh. Halo 1? Map? Yeah, that makes yeah sense. I'm just talking about, like, the campaign. Like, those two are, yeah. like, really the only ones that were open-ended. The, the rest were much more structured. But, like, they were, like, wide canyons or whatever. I forget how they described them in the past. Um, that, But, like, those two levels, that's more so what I want from... Uh, I've always wanted from Halo, and, and Infinite seems to finally be given that. Like, take that halo or silent cartographer design approach and, and and apply it with current gen hardware and then um yeah and and the, to quickly touch on what you said obm on, on the different times of day i wasn't even thinking about that earlier when i was talking about the drone mm-hmm. but that that's another thing that um i'm not sure that i think people should keep in mind that when it comes to these assets that they're making they have to optimize them and design them for any you know multiple times a day whereas that's a lot more difficult than static optimizing lighting. assets uh, that it's a lot more difficult than static lighting yeah yeah for one one specific time of day you can make those assets you know what you're gonna what's gonna hit that asset and how to make it look its best but to optimize it for multiple times a day that that's a completely different beast in itself so uh, all of that just makes what we've seen more impressive to me <laughs> like it really does look good but i'm sorry go ahead go ahead austin if you can if you were oh yeah um are we just talking about the overall campaign just the the, the map the, the map and overall oh, yeah, I mean, what, what your impressions of that yeah so i was going to this i expected it to look better and i honestly thought it looked a little better than i was expecting i thought um, someone posted a screenshot comparing like the trees from last year to this. You remember when the, he was going up the elevator and the yeah. trees kind of yeah. looked a little bad. Based on this, like it looks like there's a lot more density in the trees. Like you can, yeah. like, so I I think that like it was only like what 20 seconds of an overshot. It's kind of hard to say exactly how looking game, but if if the game actually looks like that, which I'm assuming it will, then it looks really good to me. Um, I'm excited to see. Uh, more later yeah i think we all are <laughs> yeah and yeah, like, hopefully like they'll, they'll have a decent cadence of news i don't think they're gonna yeah. have the blog post um in was it the two 24th. weeks and so hopefully they keep the, the monthly stuff up and they you know they can start doing deeper dives now like they yeah. can actually show stuff yeah. in the monthly in the blog i would love, like, yeah, I would love to they bring they back the buy dots day, you know. the what mm-hmm. sorry the Vidox, remember? Oh, those? yeah, 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 yeah. Those were awesome. Yeah, I hope so. Otherwise, it's going to be a long five months. Um, well, it... I, there's a lot they haven't covered. And, yeah. and, and, we'll, and maybe we'll touch on that when we get to the very, very end of the show. Like, in fact, that's probably, if, if, if there was a, a big... If there was a big complaint yesterday from from the Halo side of the uh, of things, I think that might have been the biggest, is that they just, they've left a lot of big things uncovered. So we're just going to have to... Expect that we'll get a get a stream of information uh, unless they just want to you know shadow drop everything on us on launch day. <laughs> you know what yeah. the forge is like. What are some of these other you know big team like the bigger team modes? I guess uh, things like that. So uh, all right, uh, I think I think we covered that one pretty well. So um, I, before I kind of move on to some other topics, anybody else have anything they d- wanted to throw in there? If not, we'll kind of move over to what we saw with the story stuff and uh, just some yeah. general uh, I, general thoughts there. But go ahead, Justin. In general, I have no idea how the heck I'm going to play everything that's coming out this year. 
God, see, that's <laughs> what I thought in my head. There's so much coming out and just coming to Game Pass starting in what next month? Yeah, in... the end of this month, even. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, for people who like Halo next week. Yep. Yeah, people who like Halo and then you see Battlefield as well, and I'm really hoping those don't come out right next to each other. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> I give me yeah. Halo either if it's not going to be before, then make it a decent amount after. I don't care if it's <sighs> December. Just don't have yeah. those two games within a week of each other, please. <laughs> Jeff, I, I, Jeff, I'm fine with December too. <laughs> oh, Jeff Grubb was saying he thinks it's going to be end of November or the first week of December, something like that. Huh. Yeah, what, I, I will yeah. any late November at the most. Like, yeah. When's uh, Battlefield? Is that October or October twenty second? I think right? October. Okay. Think Give so. me about a month. I'll be super happy. <laughs> a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I agree with you. This is gonna the, the, between those two things. You're not, it's gonna be hard to t- find time for uh, for everything else. If if you're a Halo and Battlefield fan, but uh, did you get <laughs> last base uh, super chat? Did uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Why? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 we did. We did. I did. We did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I'm gonna refer. laughs> where um, it's a very good thing, but like points are going so long that I keep missing what's come before them. Yeah, but there's just so much to talk about. And these pictures there's, look so good. Yeah, and there is. It, it, and just for everybody who who's listening knows, uh, uh, you know, obviously we're kind of impromptu doing this. We're going to have to obviously go back over some of the other information. Uh, that came out today. Uh, probably re-listen to this and and come back around soon. Um, but uh, so I wanted to. Do, I do want to move over to some of the story elements because I did think that was that was a key. That was that was a key aspect of yesterday in terms of. I think they were really trying to set up what kind of tone they're going for. Um, if you if you look back at. You know, the Halos starting with the, the OGs uh, over to what 343's done. You know, I think initially the the Bungie Halos are very much like a comic book, you know, in space kind of thing. Uh, you know, they had a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a Marvel tone to it, I guess you could say. Uh, and whereas in 343, three, as they moved over to Halo 4, they tried to go a little bit more mature, almost almost uh, more of a, a Sony, you know, kind of tone to it right if that maybe if there's not a i don't know if there's a better way to describe that but uh, they went more mature than five just was a train wreck i i a think mess. um yeah <laughs> so we won't Only really it was yeah it, it was so inconsistent yeah you could just tell all... how stitched together everything was and michael bay inspired parts were yeah well it was a it was just a mixture of everything i didn't feel like it had an identity so this was interesting and i would assume with with staten and in charge that that this is going to mean there's going to be a like a consistent identity a consistency to the story which i think is as important as anything whether you're going to go with more of a marvel kind of feel or a you know more somber you know mature tone the, the key is is to make sure it all kind of fits right as you go for, go through the story. So I want to go back through and, I, and I'm actually going to start off with our, 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 our story guys, the ones who read everything and kind of get a feel for your thoughts on this. Uh, we'll start with you this time. So um, Kat, what was your thoughts on, on what you saw from a story st- standpoint? Sorry, can we start with Nadian? I'm just trying to put it up on the, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forget. Yeah, Nadia, Nadia is involved in that. Nadia reads, too. I guess half our panel reads. Uh, and, and, <laughs> I was getting Dan, glossed over on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Daniel, uh, first of all, apologies uh, for being rude. Uh, second, uh, what was your thoughts, man? Uh, yeah, like like I kind of alluded to earlier, I think. Um, considering how disjointed 5 was, uh, this is already seeming like a like they listened you know um the moment Stanton got brought in i i kind of breathed a, a sigh of relief um yeah. and kind of like i mentioned earlier that the whole cortana clone um you know we in our in our book podcast we everybody was speculating what it was it's like oh it's probably just a backup you know it's like a windows 10 restore point for cortana and uh, essentially that's what it looks like i mean yeah. it looks like a, another copy of cortana that um you know doesn't have that may not yeah what up jesse i think the the feeling i got from it is she made multiple clones of herself throughout her life and that's a much earlier one right right like exactly. that's, that's a young halsey clone that's, that's my that's restore point as, uh, yeah yeah so it, it's cool that we're we're getting elements directly from the book um which doesn't always happen even though they, there's a lot of of um, elements that are intertwined they don't always align and and i 
kind of discussed why that happens on our book podcast, but um, it's it's great to see those elements. It's great to see that there's a clear, um, you know, the the Halo from a character standpoint, the consistency has always been about Chief and Cortana and their relationship yeah. and their and and their uh, evolution over over you know years. And so that's that's one of the reasons five just felt so off was because it was a break. And I mean, it's like it's like the Captain America trilogy. If you took away the the Bucky Cap uh, paradigm, then then the the thing falls apart. And yeah. and that's kind of why five fell apart. And so the fact that we're already getting clear indications that no, this is about um, that it's about some element of rebuilding or restoring that relationship. Um, is definitely a good sign, and and like I said, that that we're watching it now. That moment where he's grabbing that that assault rifle gingerly from uh, the the fallen marine. I mean, it's just such a great callback to the fact that they're evolving Chief as a character, and he is not just some player proxy. Um, because yeah, he always talked in the original trilogy, but he wasn't so much of a character because the whole idea is, oh well, you want to make him, you know, you want the player to be that that character but you can't do that for an entire six seven game run and yeah. and completely forego any character development i mean that mm -hmm. is not good writing regardless of what people think about i mean there's a lot of complaints that as a as a book reader and a halo nerd i i have about the original bungie trilogy especially with reach um <laughs> so so it's nice to see that they're actually listening a little bit um and that they're they're tying those elements in pretty well um yeah. i mean so far from the story aspects of it i'm I'm very happy and that's me yeah no, really really nice uh really nice insight on that um so it looks like you were kind of agreeing with with daniel anything yeah. you wanted to, um, to add on that i feel like there's only so much we can we can digest like a like a three minute three minute cutscene. but one thing i did yeah. want to point out was um Wow, the animators behind these these cutscenes, or I don't know who, I don't know if it's mocap, the amount of emotion Chief can like show while having no face, mm. while having In no just reactions, move. just his movement, just his body uh, language. When he's like walking around, uh, what I think, I think they're calling her Newtana, right? Was the name I saw, <laughs> the name I saw online. Her, his body language is he's walking around Newtana, talking to her, and like you could kind of tell that he felt relief. When he heard that Cortana wasn't deleted, a little bit like I, I, I kind of saw that. I don't know if I'm reading into it too much. I, I love like literature, so sometimes I kind of dive too much into this stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Sometimes uh, a donut is just a donut. But uh, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> that coupled with what, what I think is gonna be, I saw this earlier where the trailer had some parallels with Halo 4's reveal trailer, in my opinion. Um, with the uh, the whole exploding and then going through the door. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. on purpose. I don't know if that just happened to be what it was. But if they're going back to Halo 4 styles of narrative, which I personally think has the strongest narrative out of all the games, because at least in my opinion, story's never really been Halo's strong suit. I think right. I had to play Halo 3 like four times to understand why we were blowing the arc up. But either way, um, and it feels to me like this might be back to Halo 4 in that sense, which... Hey, for me, is a great thing because I really like Halo Force narrative. Nice, um, Jesse. Uh, you're our, our third book reader. Um, <laughs> any thoughts on what you saw with the story? Yeah, I'm curious. So, at the end of the Shadows of Reach, um, it's been out a while, but like the whole thing is they're going there. They're looking for this MacGuffin that's got th there's three boxes, and you don't know what they are. This definitely seems like that little Cortana is one of them. And now we know what the premise of Halo Infinite is and why mm -hmm. it takes place on Zeta Halo. Mm, They're point. going there. They're using one of these beta copies of a younger Dr. Halsey to go in using Forerunner tech, isolate Cortana so that they can then take her and then bring her to the ship and delete her permanently. They just force her into one copy. Um, and that doesn't happen. She's already mm -hmm. deleted. They don't know why, but then we also have the um, the audio clip where it's Cortana talking and saying, I, it's me and I'm not sure why. So it seems like I would assume that copy ends up becoming a cured version of the rampant Cortana, where instead yep. of being 
a fascist dictator. She's back to being the Cortana we knew, but she doesn't go rampant anymore because she's been in the domain and like, you know, all the lore reasons why AI's seven only lived seven degradation. years. Yeah. yeah. They start going crazy, make endless copies of themselves. Yeah. Well, this could be yeah. good copy because we got a shithead copy that won out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think yeah. that they maybe it's really nice to have the, the, the mm. domain technology you don't think i feel like at this point humanity should have adapted it and kind of you know gotten rid of that seven year limitation that's the, thing. that's the the forerunners were millions of years old and that's, that's like yeah. why they had pushed so far and even they had no idea how the domain worked okay yeah. fair that's true by the that's end true. of the forerunner trilogy they're still like yeah we don't know how this works or what it is and yeah. why we can't contact yeah. with it right now so th th there's there's a lot of books there's a lot of really good lore that they've created to figure out how the actual story of one, two and three and everything worked because those games were very surface level in details of the, the galaxy at large. So right. having, yeah. yeah, having, having all this stuff was, um, it's, I really like the fact that I now know essentially the premise of the game. Right. Which, and, and Ursul, the, you know, the way, the best way I describe it is, is that, you know, the forerunner in terms of their relationship with the domain, it's very much like how, um, the Citadel species in Mass Effect understood the Terminus gates. They knew they could use them, but they had no idea why they were there and who built them and and how to. I mean, they they weren't just jump jump gates, right? They were actually they were able to create warp holes to other galaxies. You know, so it's that the same sounds thing. like a great reference, and I'm sure anyone who's played Mass Effect definitely gets it. <laughs> oh, have you not played it? <laughs> I've only played like ten hours of the first game, oh, which, but that was enough for me to though. understand what you're talking about, though. Yeah. <laughs> all right so i want to get uh by the way uh before we end up moving on to the next topic after this if any of you guys uh are, are good at multitasking you want to try to pull together some of the uh the bullets from <laughs> the, the the today's uh drop 11 o'clock drop um that'd be great. i think dan's got oh, yeah. most of it covered because it was mainly the blog post just in okay. video gotcha um, okay cool, cool, real cool. quick all right yeah i wanted to touch on the the story bit um, yeah, because I, I haven't read much of the three four three stories, but I read all of the Bungie related ones. Um, but the the one thing regarding this one, it that's was missing in five and was definitely there in four, and I think even in the previous ones, especially three, uh, heart like there just mm -hmm. seemed to be like that whole thing, especially with what uh, Daniel was talking about earlier with the whole Cortana uh, Master Chief. Uh, uh, um mix <clears throat> i mean yeah like that whole thing just had a lot of heart for how short it was and um i just hope like the one thing with the older halos that i didn't care for with the new with the newer ones like i i get wanting to evolve master chief and i'm not opposed to that i think that's a, i think that's the right choice to make i just mm -hmm. i wasn't a fan of how much of a t chatterbox he was when you were playing as him <laughs> in halo 4 mm -hmm. I don't remember him talking as much in Halo 5, but in Halo 4, I mean, he was, like, reciting poetry damn near. Like, it just... <laughs> I, it, so, like, I I think there should be a way to have that fine balance of of doing what the Bungie Halos wanted to do with, like... And, I mean, they've been openly advertising re or Infinite as putting yourself in his shoes, like, in the helmet and whatnot. So, like, I, I'm hoping they find a fine balance of him shutting the fuck up when you're playing as him and then letting this new Cortana or whoever do kind of the exposition and, and, and narration. And then they have him talking and his character growth and everything during the cutscenes. And I mean, we've, I, I absolutely love what I've seen of all the cutscenes, and, and especially when you mix in the pilot and this new Cortana AI, I mean, there's just a lot of, there, there's a lot of like subtle emotion that oh, has been in the huh. There's a lot of soul. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of exactly <laughs> that that was kind of missing in the older ones, and like it was there in Halo Four. It was definitely there in Halo Four, um, but like there were some story beats in Halo Four that didn't quite click if you didn't read all the books up to that point. Um, and so that's one thing. That's the that's the one key thing that I'm hoping here that they properly explain why you were just drifting in space that's that's my only concern regarding the story element like i want them to properly connect the dots between the end of halo 5 and where you start off 
and infinite especially if that discover hope trailer is the beginning of halo infinite like i want to know why and uh, you know how there's plenty of ways they can do that flashbacks what have you um but i want it to be like an organic way of telling it without it being forced um, yeah. or yep. forcing you to read a book to know why the hell he was yeah if, if they force me to read a book to find out why he's drifting in space that's going to they, it shouldn't. I mean, the book that was supposed to come before Halo Infinite was Shadows of Reach, and that did not end off with him floating in space at all. That should be a game. Okay. Because I'm not oh, opposed yeah. to read. I love reading the books, but being, you shouldn't have I to. Think, that's the thing, and I think that's one of the reasons why I've been hesitant to read the three four three era books because they almost force you to do it to get the whole picture, and I, I that really bothers me. Whereas it, it should be more of like an additive, in my opinion, than yeah. uh, you being forced into paying for their expanded fiction because that's what the games are designed to do. And it just, I, I, I really hope, that, I mean, everything that I've seen has been awesome regarding the story. It's just that, that beginning, I, I hope they pull off. Yeah, no, and you bring up some good points, Mike, and that's why I, I, I probably should start going before you because you start to, to grab a lot of the things <laughs> I want to say. Uh, Proven, is, is have you? Uh, is, do you have any thoughts? On, I know again, you're a multiplayer guy. Do you have any thoughts on what you saw with the campaign stuff? Uh, well, I, I agree with what Mike said. I for this personally, I like when the thing I like about so far in Infinite, it didn't seem like Master Chief is talking that much, but like I don't mind when he talks, but. I feel like in Infinite when he talks, like every time he talks to something really important or something cool, where I thought were four and five, he talks so much that it kind of lost like the importance of what he was saying. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But so I, no, I would, I'm hoping that that continues or <laughs> maybe he only talks when he needs to. And then some of the other characters kind of fill in the exposition. Yeah. Can I yeah. Oh, go ahead. What were you saying? I was, I was just going to say, it's funny because, you know, it's this isn't Gordon Freeman, right? I mean, right. it's so weird to me that so many people want a character who's got a fantastic voice actor mm. who mm. is actually a character. Far, I mean, Gordon Freeman was literally a, a narrative. A, he was a narrative device. He was your proxy. Chief, even, even in the original, wasn't. So I, I guess I'm just still a little bit confused as to why so many people think he can't or shouldn't talk but that, that's just me i don't think anyone's saying he shouldn't talk yeah i want to i, I like i, I, I just think if you go back and play playing as it right go back and play three and then go play four and then tell me how much actual talking difference there is because there's not as much as you think there i feel is. like you talk more in you know, five I, i'm only talking about during gameplay i'm not talking about cutscenes. No, I yeah. during four, I a see. lot of that talking is actually people because you always have those people popping up on yeah, the side. On like the left, and yeah. They're talking nonstop. So I think the idea is more I want less people constantly chirping at me. Because that yeah. was definitely a thing in four. Yeah. Everyone yeah. was popping up as a little video and talking to him a ton, and he talked back occasionally. But there was a lot of in game during combat dialogue which could be distracting. I could I could agree with that i don't think it was nearly as much chief as it was lasky and palmer in cortana yeah i i think there's a balance there and so you guys bring up the, like kind of the two sides of that right like because that because daniel's right like and especially you know xbox needs to develop characters if, if anything and master chief is their biggest most recognizable one so it does make sense that you know you want to continue to building up this character that people want to follow you know, uh, through the different stories. Uh, at the same time, uh, I, and this goes to, I think, more the other side of the argument is, you know, I, I do think in four, it was a little bit in your face. Kind of, it was a little bit it, like there maybe um, like there is there is nuanced ways, I think, uh, you know, more subtle ways, more subtle ways that you can do that. And some of you guys already touched on it. And it, this was the thing that really stuck out, I think, to me. Uh, it's like what you guys were saying about the the body language, right? Like conveying that kind of feeling just through just through little details, and that was a thing that we got none of in five. Um, and again, Ford Ford tried to you know really give give him more of a, a character, more of a personality, uh, you know make make him more humanized and things like that. 
Uh, but I agree with Mike that, you know, when that's kind of in your ear, it's like, well, now I'm doing this. Now I'm thinking this. It's like, no, you don't like like a really good writer will 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 be able to have you kind Show, of assume. Yeah. Have you assume, have well, you feel it without that, without being without like. Now you know you know you know what I'm saying. Like that yeah. always feel that feels a little too on the head. It, it it feels a little almost amateur in terms of like how you're trying to de- to deliver that tone. Um, oh, go ahead, Mike. I mean, I think you described it well with being forced because, like, you know, if Cortana's telling me something while I'm playing as Chief, <laughs> I'm able to like form my own thoughts on how you know what she's telling me. But then especially in the beginning, whenever you wake up as chief and then you're going through and you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on, there's a lot of back and forth between Cortana and chief. And you just don't have, like, you're just forced to think whatever is being dumped on you based on what chief is saying. Mm. I'm not, and again, like I, I, I give chief all the time in the world, but I, I would prefer them, them, them to keep that to just cutscenes and not during gameplay. Like there's no... I don't know. It, it, it she, like in in proven kind of had it before where, like in now I grant I granted I understand that like keeping the whole man a few words, uh, um, persona. You know, there's no reason that you can't evolve away from that. But um, you know, it, I, and I want them to evolve away from that. But there was just my only concern is just during gameplay. Like they can have they can have Metal Gear Solid length cutscenes for all I care. <laughs> are you sure? You to, to, well, you know, I'm just exaggerating. You, yeah, you definitely are. I'm um, just exaggerating <laughs> for the sake of getting my point across. Like I I I, I love the cutscenes and I love the story in four, especially when I better understood it. Um, and playing it, you know, that's one of those games that I can play it over and over again and get more from the story. Um, there was just, it's just hearing Chief while I was playing as him. I, I think you will get less of that. I mean, Halo 5 had a, a, a fair bit of it, but that's because you had like multiple people playing, right? So you had like call outs and stuff. Considering Halo 4 Infinite is going to be just Chief again, right? And clones of Chief yeah. playing multiplayer. Yeah. It should be like, I'm, more of a solo I'm thing. I'm expecting just to hear from the mm-hmm. pilot and Cortana. If it's anything. a Marines walking around yeah. until you get uh, an hour in and then chief disappears and you become locked the whole time <laughs> and <laughs> I don't have to. Like, why well you brought up metal gear so i brought up metal gear too <laughs> oh yeah metal gear. I don't like a spy movie. honestly i'm just kind of happy we're gonna have a game where i can uh have like a walking supply of grenades all around me again you know <laughs> so so yeah i i so going back to that though um mike i i, I think th- First of all, I think the one thing to really note from yesterday is this was Staten. This is the the cutscene that Staten picked out, right? Like, um, so he's been in charge now for a year. Obviously, you know, I don't know how much you can really override override the, the entire story in that period of time if it if he wanted to rework it. Uh, but it, either way, you would expect that what he's going to pick out for yesterday is going to really signify what he's trying to convey for the story, the tone. Um, and, and again, you guys kind of called it out. I, I, I think just, just, I think it's worth reiterating again, that it does seem like they, they are evolving or learning how to get a little bit better at storytelling. And hopefully, hopefully it's a sign of Staten being involved. Um, I do, I, I did really picked up the, the, whatever the new Cortana, whatever new Tana, like I, you know, I picked up, they were really trying to dial in on like her facial expressions and things like that. Right. Like, and then you guys mentioned like, you know, chief, his body language and, 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 the, and that aspect. Um, so it, it really felt like they were trying to send a message that they are going to be focusing on the nuances when it comes to the story. Uh, I do hope that, um, that that some of the maybe the background stories and things like that that normally you'd have to dig through in books that will that we'll find maybe uh, through exploring on the ring and things like that to give people more incentive there. Uh, but that's just something we'll have to kind of wait and see about. Uh, but obviously we'll have to move on to our the, the thing that was the meat of it. Yeah. Get, get this thing over in two hours. Um, so I, I, is everybody good there? I mean, did I did, did okay? If if, if nobody's oh, yeah. going to object, we, we've gone. We've yeah. done quite a bit on the uh, the very short campaign piece, so now <laughs> let's do another four hours on multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, so let's try to fly through this, and we're going to probably end up coming back again soon to, to really dive in on some more of this multiplayer stuff. <laughs> um, all right, let's let, let's go around. Like, prove it. I'll start with you. I mean, I I know you're you're you're. <laughs> 
Do you no. keep doing that? He just said that he's he just the bathroom. Okay. Gotta look at <laughs> I was going to give him a chance to go first because we always go last and he has nothing to say. Oh um, and I have notes on that whole, both the video and the yeah, blog something. too. So, want to okay, start with the cool, blog? Cool. The responsible one. Huh? So let's start with Daniel. He's a okay. responsible one. <laughs> yeah, da- Daniel, let's let's start with you, man. Um, let, let's let's go back to the multiplayer aspect. Uh, so first thing that kind of stuck out to me, like I said, I, I feel like it has a little bit of its own identity. It kind of, I, I felt like there was a lot of three for three in, in what I saw with the multiplayer, it, in good ways. I thought the shooting and everything looked really tight. Like I got excited to jump in right away when I started. You know watch them you know just firing off the guns and 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 things like that and then the movement still looks like it's brisk uh, that may not be the thing that a lot of classic fans really wanted to see but uh i you know I, I i didn't expect them to really slow the game down a whole lot from from five so it still looks like it's going to be fast paced there's a lot of movement on the maps and things like that um but overall, like let, let's kind of go through some of the the, the key points. Uh, Daniel, since you are looking at some of the blog stuff, what are some of the the key things that really jump out to you about it? Uh, yeah, I mean the the five main points that I got. Well, right off the bat, uh, I guess the sixth point is, um, sorry, one of my cats is being crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we they immediately showcased BTB, right? That is something mm-hmm. that every single one of us was like god i hope that's in at yeah. launch yeah yeah and this this was a showcase specifically to show yeah it's in launch and it's it's ready to roll like it's it looks great um but in the blog and, and in the video we watched they they mentioned that um they they obviously have limited use equipment um there is no you know they mentioned to they mentioned the threat sensor which is that that you know that motion sensor grenade looking thing and then the repulsor which will deflect projectiles but they did not specify that grappling hook uh that the grappling hook was actually a limited use equipment piece so that's interesting um but they also said that they will add more um uh, equipment pieces as the game comes out and uh, they they put out updates so it it looks like it's going to be an evolving um, piece far more than the equipment for Halo 3 was, but they have called out Halo 3 specifically as the inspiration for um, for that equipment. Um, we we're going to get uh, vehicles dropped off via uh, Pelican, like everybody's you know Halo Spartan fantasy. That yeah. They Sorry. Speaking of that, can we reiterate that uh, uh, ordinance drops does not mean an Halo Halo Four style thing? Right. It is that is yeah they're getting dropped off uh, via Pelican and and the drop pods are being are dropping off uh, equip or um, weapons as an aesthetic element. They are they are not um, you know Infinity Slayer or Call of Duty um, ordnance drops where you have to earn you know kills and points to then drop those. These are these are still um, you know specific item placements. They are just giving it a visual flair. That's basically it. Um, they, you know, in that the elements um, or in the the vehicles point, they mentioned the Razorback is actually getting its its uh, its debut, and obviously we saw um, some very specific Banshee or uh, banished versions. For example, yeah. the Banshee, the yeah. Wraith, um, the Chopper, and the Chopper. Exactly. Yeah. Um, sorry, let me get this cat off me. <laughs> for those new to our podcast we're also known as the cat podcast yeah yeah halo cat crazy cra- crazy cat no, no. i, I um, put motion sensor spray cans so they would stay out of here and they still get in <laughs> anyway um and that's the last good. two um that they described were of course we saw it in the in the video we watched was the per piece customization for um your armor and that applies to coatings. Those are per piece. So, so kind of like Mike alluded to earlier, the kind of big uproar about, um, you know, the, the coatings when they first announced them, as we're kind of watching now, uh, was was definitely overblown because this is going to give you a much more uh, customizable, unique Spartan than than we've ever had previously. Um, and then the last thing was, and this was this is huge for Halo. Um, it's going to be the first one with bots. They've got uh, the Academy, which is it's got a target range, uh, customizable uh, training skirmishes, so you can throw in um, bots. And it made it sound like you were going to be able to potentially uh, script those, maybe. 
Um, and then, uh, of course, there's also a training mode in there. So that in itself is is kind of a huge, huge thing that I think um, we could all touch on. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, that was like time. the rumor about Forge where you might be able to set up like customizable encounters mm. for people, yeah. which would be so freaking nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That was, that was a lot. Point. Yeah, those are some some really big points. And, and I think, you know, touching on the customization and things like that. Uh Proven, let me let me go over to you. Uh it's been a little bit. So uh, calling you and, and just kind of like some of the things that you, you know you really want to talk about when it comes to the multiplayer i think you're a little bit more dialed in when it comes to some of the customization stuff or you know what some of the communities says about that so what, what was kind of your thoughts on that yeah well just overall i think the thing that stood out the most to me was when they talked about the uh battle passes how they never expire and mm. you can uh buy it so let's just say down the road uh we're in season seven you can go back to season one and still buy the battle pass from that, from yep. the launch of the game and complete that, which is really, that's like the best in implementation of battle passes I've ever heard of because like, I remember I bought the battle pass for apex legends thinking out how I'd have a bunch of time to play, but I ended up not having any time to play. So I basically just wasted the money cause I couldn't. Uh, right. Go it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I no think FOMO. That, that's yeah, a really good call out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, the problem with a lot of multiplayer games today is it's like you have to play it constantly or you're missing out for this. It seems like you could pick up the game a year after launch for some reason, if you want to do that, and then you could still get all the content that they provide. So I think that's great. I think the armor customization, it seems like a really great expansion of what reach was, which I think most people consider the best um, customization Okay, I thought you were going to uh, say like multiplayer campaign, and I'm like, no, oh, no, no, whoa. <laughs> just the customization. I think that's the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I feel yeah. like a lot of people think that. Um, everything, yeah. So for the customization, everything seems really, really good. Um, I'm interested to hear more details on how the, like, how much does the armor pieces cost? Are yep. they, yep. like, I'm, I'm hoping they're not too expensive, but. You know, speaking I, of. Well, uh, purchasing well, them. they did say that yeah, sorry, everything yeah. that you can earn, I mean, you can earn everything in game yeah. without paying, you know, without yeah. paying a dime. Well, not that, just that. Just the important. They also it said, how, uh, sorry, just really quick, because um, it's kind of important in my opinion. It's kind of like uh, like a game like WoW where you have like a store where you can buy things, but nothing you get from in-game can be purchased. They mentioned that in, in the 12-minute video. So those really fancy looking battle pass rewards, someone can't just go and buy them with real money. Mm. You got to play through, do the challenges or whatever to get them, which is a pretty good thing for me. Yeah. No, that, that's I'll, a big key. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'll, go ahead. I was just going to add real quick. I, it just depends on how long it takes. Yes. Because for, fair. like, I remember Halo Reach, like to get Inheritor, which is like the max rank that took like... It was like a million credits. <laughs> yeah, it was like thousands of hours. Like, it was like, so much. It just, so if I, the only... Thing I'd be slightly worried about. Like, I hope they don't like make it harder to get the armor through gameplay just because they're trying to charge money for it. I hope they keep it the same as like Halo yeah. Breach yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like, you could still play at a reasonable pace and get everything. I think yeah. it's going to be better than Reach. I think it's going to be like exactly like what we see with MCC. Yeah, I yeah, think. I, hope so. I mean, everything about this from from the seasons that don't expire to to the the way that they're doing a a, a progressive um uh, unlocking system it it's it seems like mcc like we've said time and time again was the the beta for this so i don't i think i i don't think people have to worry too much about yeah. um having to spend 10 million credits to to get chief's voice in in uh yeah firefight like they did with reach yeah, yeah. Yeah, the devil is always in the details with these things, right? Because a lot of times they can sound they can sound good or even concerning on paper, but it's it, it comes down to where they move that slider in in terms of how long it takes you to earn something, yeah. How expensive those things the, the are. The thing is, like, it sounds so good, but like in the back of my mind, I'm like, they want to make money on this somehow, so they're gonna like have to incentivize people to pay money eventually. Yeah. So I'm curious how that works. Yeah, I mean, that's it, it, going to be interesting. Yeah, because like to your point, if it's free to play, they, 
you know, the, the, this stuff isn't going to, I feel like it's, it can't come too, too easy. Otherwise, you know, yeah. that, that's just now how those models work. I, I did like what you said about the battle pass stuff. I've never really got involved in that stuff too much myself. Number one, cause I always play Halo <laughs> and, they've, and they don't, <laughs> they haven't really been doing that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think giving you that option to kind of drop in and out, go back and get things you missed, you know, for somebody to come in maybe like a year later, be a completionist still, right. Kind of, go back and, and fulfill some of those challenges in the past. I think that that is a, that is a, a, a pretty worthwhile call out. Um, all right. So no, yeah, that covers. So what about any other thoughts on the customization aspect? Uh, yeah. Of it? Sorry. I, I know I'm sorry. If uh, someone else wants to say something, feel free, please. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was, um, and we brought this up yesterday uh, after the, the E3 show. Um, and they have a little blog post here, but we didn't see many red and blue, right? In both right. videos we saw, it wasn't. It was big team battles. It wasn't like it was all just free for all. They had their full customizations on them. And if you read the, yeah. uh, there's a line in the blog that says, "To fully support our goals for expanded player expression, the team has designed a new friend and foe system. At high level, this functions yeah. as an outline system that uses different colors to denote friends and foes, and you can change them for accessibility, which is pretty cool. But I think that means they're doing away with one team being yeah, blue, one yeah, team being red. Yeah, the moment yeah, there's no red versus yeah, yeah." yeah. Which is a relatively big change. Yeah, right. and, and I, I've been looking through the video, and it's it, there's like a pretty clear like outline of who the enemy is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were discussing how you could just change that. So like, if you want to make the outline like green or pink or whatever, mm. like you could change the color of your oh, wow. team. Yes, yeah, so you could change it for yeah, like so if you're the enemy blind, is. You can yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. <laughs> so there's there's a bunch of cut like. Uh, accessibility options and you could customize it however you want it seems so that seems really really cool yep uh, the one thing i think it was daniel that mentioned it earlier and it's um with the way they handle battle passes there's no fomo and i, I to yeah. me that is really really important because that to me that's a big turnoff like that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why i never got into battle passes on any game because mm -hmm. i don't want to be forced to play a game constantly to be a job yeah, 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 and and feel obligated unless I'm going to miss something, uh, because I do have OCD, and if I so, <laughs> you know, it, it, so if I did dive into something like that, just knowing that I missed something would just eat me to the core. So I I I purposely ignore all that stuff just to keep my sanity somewhat. And but the fact that this one, you know, you can uh, like uh, um, like Austin said, you can you can do the first one a year down the road if you wanted to to me that's huge that is that yeah. that means that i'm more likely to dive into uh the battle pass system in this game whereas that i would have never done that before yeah. and so you know for people like me i'm sure these companies are like well we have to have this fomo thing and we have to have them constantly playing so that we can keep them engaged and so they we make sure that they uh take part in these battle passes but or seasons or however way they call it but that turns, you know, I'm, I'm hoping now you can get even more people like they're, me that would shy away from that stuff because doing of that. both. They're, they're doing the battle passes, which you can choose whichever one you want. But they also say they'll have ex limited time seasonal events, probably like specific oh, challenges shit. for certain pieces. So it's going to be a, a mix of the two. You know what I mean? Because some people love the seasonal stuff. They think of it as a reason to come back to the game on a regular basis. It's going to be just like MCC. for me and my wife. <laughs> well, I, I just hope the seasonal stuff doesn't have exclusive stuff stuff that i can't get otherwise like by other systems or means i hope it's well um, balanced just, like I, you know yeah. would wonder if it if they then roll it into the next season it's like yeah, one of the tiers cool. that you yeah. can yeah i think destiny back might do that right? i actually have no idea how destiny seasons work so. destiny I seasons disappear once they're done uh, yeah. yeah i wouldn't be that's surprised just, if like this is more like mcc where you have the exchange yeah. so that elements that you may have missed when it was a seasonal thing you can still get it just uh you know oh, that's cool you pay 20 credits or whatever it is mm -hmm. versus just the one or two or having to earn it through like because like the bug splatter one right you had to kill 350 um drones for the first oh my season God. they did that and so it really wasn't that bad if you just loaded up um uh see uh, yeah halo 3 the the god i can't remember the the, the base second one level. Yeah, yeah, second level. yeah yeah and you just spam yeah. that so i'm sure they're going to do something similar to that where you will still probably be able to earn those after the fact it'll just it'll just incur a higher in-game currency yeah. cost. that's actually pretty cool that's yeah, it's, be okay it's, with a, that. 
Yeah, me the too. MCC system is perfect, and I was really hoping it would be one to one. And the fact that it seems like it's going to be one to one with mm-hmm. the addition of a paid tier, so you get the free yep. tier, and then they'll have the paid tier. Yeah, and that system's the best battle pass system I've seen yet. Yeah, it's just because it's the most fair and it's the least. I'm curious if you'll earn another battle pass if you complete that one because I know a lot of games do that, I, but they didn't mention I'd, it yet. I bet you would. Right, it makes sense. Yeah, because because they want to incentivize you to keep playing. So, and they don't so, want bad press. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> qu- question for the panel, because I'm guessing this is going to be a question for a lot of people out there that that are used to red versus blue. I, I can immediately, you know, uh, yeah, feel some anxiety, right, um, from some people out there. And and I see like the benefit, obviously. Like they want it's a free to play. They want you to dress up your character and they want you to play team battles and still feel like you're getting something out of dressing up your character, you know, or buying pieces for your armor and things like that. So it, it totally makes sense why they're going to this route. Does anybody see some challenges with this over time? Or do you, it, like, is, does anybody have any experience with, with this type of, uh, you know, recognition of teammates and other games? Like, how, how well do you think this will work out versus what we've you know what we're used if, to uh, can, can you see people maybe trying to call their their spartans to to blend into backgrounds if, and things like that well i mean they already do with the, well, the red versus. Yeah. yep yep yeah yeah i mean very one if they have an outline system then and that works yeah. well that means they're less likely to be able to blend in yes correct and i was and, gonna say that's one of the biggest problems that i've always had with the red versus blue like my eyesight's not that great and depending on the match and level mm-hmm. that you're on, in midship, if you're you're, you're blue, midship. you're invisible, yeah. or if you're red, you're exactly. invisible too, depending on which team I'm on. Right. But yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so this 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 to me screams that again. It's it's not just for accessibility. It's also so that map design will not be hindered yeah. by an archaic system. That's ultimately for me what it is because red versus blue. You know, we always talk about, you know, Abe, you've mentioned this time and time again when we talk about Halo 4 and 5 customization. You're like, well, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what yeah. colors you pick because it's, you're just red or blue anyway. Well, this actually right. gives yeah. you and everybody else the ability to truly be the Spartan that they want to be, but more for people who have trouble with seeing things or just, you know, you can still build those those forerunner and and uh, covenant looking levels and not have somebody at an inherent it's like advantage win, 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 because they you know? yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and another another factor is like in halo 5 um i'm sure everyone here knows but like they purposely break the lighting hmm. in the multiplayer so that someone can't hide in the shadow like you you are mm. like lit up in shadowed areas and everyone's it looks... alloy like a hero lighting yeah, yeah, a brand new term, and it, by the and, way. And it just it, it completely breaks the the graphical element, um, and it's obviously mm-hmm. there for gameplay. Yeah, this type of again, this outline system helps them curve that. Like, granted, you probably still don't want someone hiding in the shadows in complete darkness, but um, if they have an outline that that makes it so that they're not completely oblivious to the the yeah. lighting condition they're sitting in. And uh, I, I think I don't think over over time there's going to be an issue with this system i think most of the issues is going to be up front in the beginning just Mm -hmm. giving people time to adjust because like i i know for a fact i'm going to have to adjust to an outline system um and yeah and that's mainly that what would probably i would imagine take one or two games at most like just yeah just figuring out how it works um and then going forward with it plus we probably have gamer tags above friends or enemies or whatnot like that's always been a staple in in halo games so yeah. that can be an additional uh, visual cue yeah and, and uh so I, i'm uh, immediately thinking about we'll probably do some research on, on what's going to be the easy best outline <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like do some scientific research on what's going to give you that slight little advantage all right so I, I i think we covered that pretty well that's a really good point and i think brought some good information out there um you know regarding some of the customization the battle passes and in the outlining um uh, i want to move on to some of the because we only got we should, really should be trying to wrap up in about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, I, I really want to make sure we had some time to talk about some of the gameplay stuff we saw. Uh, for me, the thing that really, really jumped out to me specifically was the physics. Yes. Um, you know, both in terms of like how, you know, you're, you're picking up weapons. Even, I, 
I think they I think they intentionally, you know, slowed this shot down when one of the Spartans gets shot and kind of like, you know, his head goes back, right? Like yeah. even the and the animations, it looks like it's there's more reaction to the environments. The vehicles hit different. I'm, you know, based on and I haven't really like zoomed in on it to see why, but it does it did feel like like even for me like the vehicles seem to um just react differently, right? Like as they're rolling around the environment. So they had uh, the scene with the warthog without a tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so that, awesome. That alone. Yeah. So like all that stuff. I want to just kind of let's just kind of go around. And like it, 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 thoughts on gameplay. That's what stuck out to me. Like that's what I'm really excited about because I, I just see like the dynamicness of the, especially like you know if you're going to grab a grapple hook and, and some of the the video clips we're going to get from stuff like that later on. Um, you know, I just to, the the gameplay really excited me yesterday. Yeah. And, and yeah. when I saw that, I was sold. I was good. I was ready. I was like, okay, this is a good E3. I'm ready to you know whatever happens. This is <laughs> I got what I wanted. Right. Um, what was kind of some of your guys' thoughts from from the gameplay stuff? Um, let's uh, start with Jesse again. What do you think, man? Pretty much, it was just again. It, it showed that they've had the time. They've had the extra year, however long that ends up being. Um, September feeling less and less likely because that's not actually a holiday anymore. Um, (laughs) Yeah, this is the first Halo multiplayer I think I'll probably stick with quite a bit in jumping between this and Battlefield. Um, Yeah, and quick resume should help. The variety, the variety to everything that they showed looked the 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 thought behind the um, consumables, the, the the pickups. Because I really didn't like them when they had them in like three and reach. I thought they were shittily balanced and they were kind of boring. And these ones are dynamic. They're cool looking. The things you will be able to do with them mixed with the physics, mixed with the vehicles, mixed with the environments is incredibly exciting. Like not just the grapple shot, but... The, the even like oh I'm gonna throw down a shield then my teammate can shoot it and kill a guy who's right next to it because now there's this thing in the air for the rocket to explode and stuff like that it, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be awesome yeah I'm team very ta- excited. team tactics right like uh, like it just opens up a lot of yeah. possibilities there um so what about you man what, what, what did you think uh, well one thing I wanted to mention really quick was um and this is a big change and it affects anyone who uh, enjoys big team battle which has traditionally been an 8 versus 8 mode, is now a 12 versus 12. That's, I think, a significant change. Um, I don't know whether it's a good change or a bad change yet. I mean, we'll have to see how the game plays. But it, it means bigger maps, more mayhem, more vehicles, all that stuff. In terms of the gameplay itself, um, one thing I noticed, which is kind of funny, was, you know, in the, in the first uh, trailer, the multiplayer trailer, they had the dude hiding behind the drop shield, and then uh, he sticks someone jumping into the shield. Yeah. So I watched it again, and I guess the reason why they got that stick off, even then it was kind of a lucky shot, is because he saw him grappling hook a straight line. So right. he knew exactly where he was going or what his, yeah. what, what his you know, d- destination was. So you can kind of line it up a little easier. So I feel like it's the grappling hook, while it looks obviously pretty strong, also kind of locks you in for a, a mm-hmm. decent amount of time. And you, people know exactly where you're going if they see the, the full path. So I'm, I'm pretty curious to see exactly how well this all balances and how much they're going to tune it and whatnot. Yeah. Awesome, awesome points. Any, any other call-outs? Daniel, any, any call-outs for you from the gameplay aspect? Uh, yeah, I will, but I think Austin's had his hand up for a bit, so I'm, I want to let oh, him go. Oh, Austin, I'm sorry. I'm, ter- I'm terrible at multitasking. Okay. I told you that. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, I, man. I've, I've, just, I've just been looking at the, the multiplayer over like this back and there's so much like to go through uh, um the thing that like stood out the most to me is it seems like you can combine a lot of the elements in the game to make cool gameplay moments or like i i think halo 5 had that a lot um but a lot of that was based on like whatever you spawned with like this seemed like there's a scene i can't figure out what this this guy has like a gravity hammer and he's sprinting and he like slams the ground to give him a boost up in the air Hmm. And then, like, lands on someone. Like, yeah, so that, that's the thing I love about Halo. Is, like, you can just combine like all the stuff that's in the game the to make. Yeah, the, I, I don't want to use that word. <laughs> I know you don't, I'm trying not to use that word. 
Uh, <laughs> it just, we can use that word. It just seems like there's so much. Like there, there's a there's a moment where this guy is getting rushed and he drops his shield to cover the door, and then like it, like it kind of gives him a moment to like back up a little bit. Then he, and then I don't know if you guys saw, but you can kind of shoot panels off the shield. Yeah. So like you could like shoot. You don't even have to destroy the whole shield. You could shoot one panel off and still kill the guy. That's really interesting. Yeah. Gonna, Yep. But it, it seems like, like I agree with you guys. Like I like the equipment Halo Three, but I also agree it's kind of basic. This seems like really well thought out. Where it's like, like this is the reason I kind of like the idea of equipment is mm-hmm. if it's implemented correctly, it seems like it could be really, really fun. Also, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, um, I, I, and you know, to, to kind of piggyback on that, um, Austin is is you know the one thing that three four three did a, a great job with it, with with Halo Five, and I'll say this is why I played that game over two thousand hours, uh, despite all the heat it, it, it's gotten, is the balance, right? Like even even with the, I was like when I first saw the Spartan mobility stuff, I was just like, you know, like I I was I was part of the you know the group that was like, no, this uh, this doesn't go in Halo, but I will say that once I started to acclimate to it you saw how well everything balanced and it was almost like a like one of my friends describes it as like he's really in the fighting games he's like he describes it as almost like a fighting game it's almost like everything has its counter right like so dance yeah and and so like you know there's they really in the at the end of the day like nothing really at least in the competitive never really overpowered within the sandbox and um and and so like that that that's always a reassuring aspect that is one of the strengths of 343's multiplayer teams assuming they still have a lot of that talent that carried over or philosophies uh into this when you start to see them add these other elements like add these physics add the fact that now a vehicle can you know lose its wheel and and you have you can pick up a grapple hook or or shield and things like that and just kind of knowing that there's probably things that will count countermeasure that right like you can over time people who got really good with halo 5 like learn how to handle the people that that charge around the maps all the time right like when i first started playing that the people were just running each other over all the time and then eventually it was like all of a sudden like everybody was like a ninja and like you know doing the little thing where they boost behind you so that you eventually uh you know I, th- I think that's the one area that i that i am very confident in 343 is and again, assuming they they've carried over some of that talent, is being able to balance all these things. So that makes that that layer of physics and um, you know n- new new little gadgets in, in the sandbox a lot more exciting. Uh, but anybody else like thoughts on the game, gameplay? Like, yeah. What else? Um, I was gonna say, kind of in tied tied in with yours and with with Austin's that, um, you know, for me a, a huge physics nerd like that yeah. kind of like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. That was so great just to be able to see that that your actions you you you're not just bound to um placements you're not just bound to movement you can use explosions you can use your inertia to 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 modify the play field right and um you know that that i my wife and i watched the the halo trailer three times yesterday in 4k after after the stream and just being able to just that that beautiful sword catch you know like (laughs) tossing the nade Yep. launching towards you grabbing it like, that evolved. was that to me yeah to me that was that was like oh my god this is this is everything this is like if if three reach and uh four or yeah five excuse me in some ways had a baby like this is the, <laughs> the culmination of everything that i want in halo and and for a guy who um you know i did i wasn't a huge fan of equipment in three but yeah and i was i was skeptical about how i mean i was one of the the worried you know worried parties when they first mentioned that they were bringing it in uh infinite but this really showed me like this made me feel at ease this showed me that you know they aren't just you know there's their strategy there's there's um multiple uses for them you know it's the drop shield like you guys were saying isn't just for your own protection you can use it as a weapon in in it in its own right and um that that element was very much like uh three with the bubble shield and this feels like you know three bungie had a great idea but they didn't really implement it well beyond one or two pieces of that equipment and i feel like hopefully um from what we've seen so far i this seems like they get it you know because like the motion Mm -hmm. sensor was pretty much garbage in in three 
the the threat detection grenade that you have in in infinite looks like a an evolution a better version of that so it's taking a great idea and making it better yeah pretty uh, get your hand back up oh no uh, <laughs> you just never okay. did that never <laughs> that. okay sorry no, no. Um, <laughs> i mean to touch on uh what both you said abe and uh, daniel like again uh, add another vote to the whole physics uh fan aspect like that and and you know it's weird because I, I think you said earlier abe about um them keeping the pace a little bit faster and stuff like that uh which classic fans may not be uh, pleased about I, but see I, I i'm not sure if i actually agree with that because halo 2 is usually considered the best by classic fans and that's the fastest mm -hmm. Whereas three, a lot of like my biggest complaint with three is how slow you you move around compared to like Halo one and two. Yeah. So like this, yeah. this is like a nice um, balance between like the evolution of gameplay from the more recent titles and and really that started with Reach where they introduced like uh, sprint and everything that people, I guess older Halo fans were not a plan a fan of. But like this one, I, I like how fast it is, and I I mm -hmm. just everything in this. Yeah. sounds just looks absolutely amazing and like what uh daniel touched on earlier with the whole physics thing like i remember in halo 3 the one good thing about halo 3s uh was the physics and you know there was i think there was one of the first like viral type multiplayer videos where someone uh shot a sniper and it ricocheted off of a wall a couple of times hit a fusion coil and it blew up a cone and that hit someone in the head for a, a kill you know like so Things like that, like I hope we see that back in mm -hmm. the infinite because I feel like uh, that type of physical interaction or reaction really was kind of lost with later Halo titles. Um, and and you know, like I've always in the past considered um, Halo and Battlefield are those two games where it has those respective moments that you don't get in any other multiplayer game. Like you have your Battlefield moments. And you have your Halo moments that you never get in another shooter outside of those two uh, IPs. But that has, again, kind of been lost with um, Halo. And that not, and I get why. I'd agree with that. 343 has made it more. Um, it's almost more catered to, uh, towards mm -hmm. the uh, esports crowd. Like you're removing variables that could alter how the game plays out. And I get why. Um, but I, I want that stuff back in, and it looks like we're getting that with Infinite. Yeah. Like it's, especially when grenades affect spawned weapons and stuff like that alone. Like what Daniel said earlier with the with the sword. When that happened, I was like, yes, <laughs> like that's exactly it. Yep. So, um, I, I mean, the speed is is good. You know, I I think the thing that separates Halo from a lot of other games is the time to kill. Whereas even if you get someone, because you know, in like the Call of Duties and even in Battlefield Five, that took adjustment from a, for a lot of Battlefield people, a shorter time to kill means that like the first person to see the other person usually wins. Um, yep. Whereas in Halo, even if someone got a drop on you, because it typically would have a longer time to kill, you at least have a chance to turn the the tides in your favor. Um, so as long as that is still in there, and it does definitely seems to be with all the gameplay footage we're seeing, like it's, um, yeah, I, I, as someone that has just kind of casually played multiplayer, just more so with friends, I, I am super pumped <laughs> with multiplayer in this one. Really, really, uh, loving what I'm seeing there. Yeah. Amazing points. And, and I think that's something that needs to continue to be highlighted too, because, you know, one of the things we talked about is, you know, is with the, with this, one of the talking points for Halo coming into this is like this is going to be a, a Halo S Halo, you know. It's like how are you <laughs> yeah. going to how how do you going how do you you how do you make a, a Halo S Halo like still feel like Halo but evolve right or, or be different or See, or, or I innovate and and I think that like really like this aspect that we're talking about it it plays into what the core game is but it's just making it better right and I think that is something that like to your point Mike it. You know, and I, and I play Call of Duty sometimes with some friends, and then you don't get that in there. It's just, it's just you run around, you point, you shoot, you you find somebody, you shoot. Yeah. Uh, at least for me, I mean, sorry, Call of Duty fans, if I'm if I'm slandering your game or I don't understand it, but that 
you know, most other games just don't have that. They don't have, like you were saying, the Battlefield and the, the Halo d- do have those things that, that it's like, holy crap, I can't believe that happened. You, you record it, right? I feel like you're going to get the next level of this. And it, and it is goes back to kind of what I was saying early. It's like taking this blend of some of the, those elements that you got in the classics, like what you're talking about with as the dynamic aspects, but it's, it's, it's bringing in some of the modern aspects and it's just, and it's making it a little bit of their own too. So, um, but yeah, that was pretty, you're going to say something else there, Mike. I, I'm sorry. If I, oh, just I the whole halo ass halo thing. Um, I don't <laughs> think when that was originally said, that was meant as a bad thing. And I no, think any, any halo I fan I, that I'm good with halo. anything on, anything, on any, his podcast yesterday, grub said he isn't a halo fan. So for yeah. him, it's like, this is going to be a Halo S Halo for Halo fans. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing for them. Right. Yeah. And then he started talking to people. He was like, yeah, no, they really liked it. This Halo S yeah. Halo is exactly what we wanted. Uh, no, yep. exactly. I mean, but I, I, I've i seen some people spin that as a negative. It's the only reason why I meant Because like when Grubb said that, I don't think he meant, he didn't say that as a bad thing. He just said that. Yeah. Because he, he he said it from the object, from the perspective that he's not a Halo fan. And, and that's right. fine. And yeah. But and this is going to be. A, a a game for the Halo fans, and it is like that's that's really what it should be because Halo is still, especially now, unique in this market, yeah. um, and it and it should be exactly what it is. Well, what else plays like this? And especially if you want to play like competitive for fun or for or anything like like there's yeah. what 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 other. And so it has its own identity, and that's always been my my point, you know. And I, and I I hear the the point of people have said, you know, well I've grown beyond, you know, I used to like Halo, now I play Call of Duty or I play this or that, and it's just not for me anymore. And I'm I'm hoping they do something that brings me back in. And it's like, but you know, you have other things to 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 maybe you know hit those other notes. There is for, for if Halo were to like maybe become more like some other going other directions uh there's nothing to take its place right it, it is still the only thing it is still the only thing with this high time to kill that that has like you know this reliance on vehicles and the bigger modes uh the way that it does the way that everything kind of plays out so differently in in the sandbox there's, there's nothing that's going to really take its place so it, it's important for for halo to nail it for people that have been playing this thing for almost 20 years now. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think for those people that say that they used to play Halo or they used to be in the Halo and now moved on to other things, that was almost by default because way back in the day, in the early console shooting yeah. days, everything else was crap or mostly yeah. crap. All, All you played Halo, was Halo. So if you wanted to play a good console shooter, Halo was the place to play it. And then now, thankfully, I mean, it's a good thing that we have a lot more mm-hmm. options in terms of console shooters. So right. it's a good thing. Like, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be a bad thing that you moved over to Call of Duty. Like, that's fine. That's, yeah. I mean, um, and, but option. trying to cater or or bend Halo to cater to those types of people, I don't think is the right direction right. to take the, the series. Or, or, or even, even you know, evolved to the point where it loses, its, it completely loses its identity, which yeah, I don't think exactly. it's done here. I, I think it's kept its, it's still kept uh, its core identity, at least from what I can see right now. I do, I do have to read the uh, the super chat six dollars from Blast the Base. He says, "Have we seen the end of red versus blue? Will yeah. color customization appear in team based modes?" Yes, uh, it, yes. Yeah, I think the show ended a little while back, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, still I, think he's ta- I, I, <laughs> I think he's talking about the actual uh red versus blue in, in game uh I, i'm i'm guessing it'll be there in custom games right something like that <laughs> but, <laughs> i mean it can be there if you really wanted it to be there yeah. i'd imagine you know you um pick a red skin <laughs> yeah you can get a bunch of friends together and and but yeah in terms of the matchmaking it looks to be over yeah. Um, real quick, you guys, because I, I know we're like we're already running over like we always do. Um, <laughs> so, a, any last thoughts on that gameplay before I, I do want to just touch on one last thing that was covered today uh, in today's go video. and touch on it. OK, let's touch on that. Um, <laughs> let's touch it. Uh, so they they <laughs> have a they have a new train training mode. Uh, and, and I thought this was neat. So they're, they're, they're going to bring in bots this time. And it seems mm-hmm. like they're pretty excited about it um, personally. I, you know, I thought at first I thought, well, this isn't for me because I'm not I'm not somebody who needs to like necessarily go through uh, a bunch of tra- Halo training modes after. I don't feel like I mean, you know, maybe maybe to learn a couple of new things. But um, 
But it got me kind of thinking because they're, they're having the bots in here. Uh, you know, Microsoft obviously is an AI company, and and they they also have drive mm-hmm. tires and in, in Forza. So has anybody heard anything, or am I just right now speculating and kind of dreaming up what this might mean over time? What what do you guys have? You guys heard anything specific about the the bots and maybe it, what this could mean in other modes or anything like that? I mean, I mean they didn't. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I just imagine that it, it can mean like human versus bot type scenarios, or I guess if push comes to shove, you can have it fill in empty slots if someone drops out so that at least there's something doing something. I guess it all depends on how well the bots are programmed. I mean, if, if they're uh, if they're like typical human bots in Halo where it takes them three years to enter a vehicle, then <laughs> maybe it would be better for them not to be in multiplayer games. But um I mean, the, the key thing here for the training, at least for me, is that's a a safe space. I hate, you know, the, for the lack of a better term, that you can become acclimated with the equipment without yeah. being forced to join mm-hmm. it in the heat of battle. And mm-hmm. you can really get down the nuance and how the me- mechanically they feel um, in, yeah. in, in a way that you probably couldn't under pressure. Yeah, they specifically mentioned in the blog post that, you know, it, it's... Um, the the firing range, the uh, training mode, and the um, academy um, where you can set up bots and and set up you know mini scenarios is um, basically to acclimate new players. But to me, it sounds like like what A was kind of alluding to that it's a it's a perfect opportunity to to bring in um, mm. custom made scenarios for Forge, and um, I'm hoping that they do use um, you know. Halo Tars, I guess. I don't know what the, yeah. the, 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 the Halo version of <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So oh, that's, that's a good um, point. Yeah. You know, beyond just um just the training mode, like hopefully we can get, you know, if if uh you know, my my dream is if your buddy drops connection, well, instead of having to find a new player or whatever, they can just put in his Halo Tar, you know. So that um, it fills in for him while he's gone, and and um, they didn't, but they didn't specify. So right now, this is all purely spe- it's all speculation. Yeah, it's it, it's all dreaming and hoping, and it, yeah. it, but it makes so much sense. Like, it, it, here's the thing: like to Mike, to your point, yeah, bots usually suck, right? Like, usually when I hear bots, I'm like, okay, that's that that it's like the that's like maybe the like a a, a non thing to be to really focus on because anytime it generally that you've had to try to use bots in games it's it, it's a it's never really a great alternative to anything yes. um but the, the the my hope because you know obviously you know they're kind of moving into this whole this 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 cloud thing and they're, they're doing a lot of uh we know microsoft's doing a lot of r d on on AI, you know, they, they, they actually, so it's, I wanted to bring this up and again, this, this is not like news. This is just me speculating and we'll probably won't spend any time, any time on it. But last year there, there was a, uh, during one of the game stack shows, they brought in Ninja Theory and they were doing, they were actually using bleeding edge to try to replicate like behavior. And mm-hmm. so they're, it, it's not like we're it's not like we're in the old days. A lot of the stuff is processed, you know, locally or very limited on, on servers. It's like, it's like really taking a lots and lots of data more than they ever did. And really big trying data. to get to the point. Yeah. Like big data, like, like just <laughs> to a different level um, to, to, to try to replicate like those behaviors. So I don't know, this is just me throwing this out there. It, it, it's something to maybe look for, not something that's happening, but just maybe hope for uh, uh, look for possibility that that i think is might be realistic because they are spending a lot of time in reinforcement learning and, and maybe this is we already know drive tires exist this could there could be another evolution of that and yeah. um so when i saw the bot thing i was like immediately i've i've already been been hoping and in, in, in that they would bring some of this to like a forge to a even you know campaign-ish you know aspects so um but it's just yeah and 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 nrx said this is my dream is that ms Microsoft leverages Azure machine learning on player data for millions of players to create high-end bots. That's exactly yep. what I was getting yeah. at. So, yep. so I just want to share my dream. <laughs> That's a great idea. Like a, a, PM. <laughs> taking the drive guitar angle and and putting it into a shooter. Now, granted, I, I imagine that probably hasn't happened yet because driving and around a track is different than all the variables in a shooter. But I mean, 
if there's any time for that technology or concept to evolve, I mean, now is a great now. time. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, it, you know, doing like what Daniel, especially like your, your halo tar <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> just, yeah. you know, replacing you if you drop out because of a connection drop or something. I mean, that's such a good idea. Like, man, yeah. You know, and, and Mike, they're going to look at your Halo tar, and they're going to think that there's something wrong with the egg. Oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> my my Halo tar is just going to be running into a wall and, yeah, and staring at, like, four, you know, know like, <laughs> staring Halo at, like, tar will say, oh, sorry, I was looking at chat, and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While looking at, like, you know, rubbish you know detail would, on the uh, ground. No, no that, is Mike's, that is Mike's human behavior. That is perfect. You know who would really want super smart killer bots is, like, you get the U.S. Army to just give you billions of dollars for research, and then we play Halo in their Boston Dynamic robot murders oh every my God. future. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, uh, Joseph, <laughs> that's a sign. <laughs> we should... But, all right, but that, that yeah, it's just something to kind of look out for. All right, so great discussion, everybody. I think we covered a lot of the basics. We're going to have to come back again, I think, obviously, in a couple of weeks. Yep. And um, really, all get, it, about yeah. all the cool website stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely need some more time to dive in to yep. specifics, free, freeze some frames, learn some new yeah That's terminology. Funny. We already we already got a couple right. We got the Halo towers, and we got the yeah. um, Nutana. We're all grapple jack. Grapple jack. To grapple jack um, so uh any, any other anybody have any final thoughts they were hoping to get out that i uh that they didn't that was yep. a great show yesterday um one yeah. last thing i was sorry i wanted to mention was we still haven't really seen arena a uh, deep dive in arena yet so there's yeah. still a lot to show even when it comes to just the multiplayer i that think they'll keep doing monthly updates like, yeah, to yeah write they want to stay in the news yeah. i'm hoping we see a new mode like a big, big yeah big, yeah that we didn't see that huh I mean, biggest the, team battle. The, the rumors was like 50 player. Yeah, I would love to see a 50 oh, player. The rumor was bigger than that. The, the rumors well, are yeah, 100 plus. I saw the most more recent one, but 1. that 5, is like 12, 12 Spartan teams. Yeah, that that teams. I don't. Know. Are we allowed? Are we allowed? Oh, I don't know where that came from, so I don't know if that. Yeah, is. yeah, I'm not. Uh, yet. Uh, that's I then all over the place. Maybe it might not launch with it. Possibly, but there's a chance. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. how a lot of them are going now. You launch with your. Your base stuff, Four. and then like the big mode comes a few months later. Like that's how Warzone was with Call of Duty. Yeah, wasn't there? There'll probably, there probably be a big mode. I, I I feel like they've hinted at that stuff enough. So so there's there's that. There's Arena. There's Forge. There's a lot. There's a lot that, yeah. that's, that's still gonna. I, I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot to speculate about. A lot that's gonna be revealed over the next. Um, what is it? Six months, possibly five, six months. So yeah. Um, yeah. so we'll have. Plenty to talk about until the last launching. thing that I can just say is that as a Halo fan, they they did good. Three four three. If you ever see this, kudos. You've it. done yeah. good. Like yeah. multiplayer, even mm -hmm. campaign, yeah. even what little smidgen of the campaign they shown it calmed my concerns regarding the graphics and stuff. So yeah, like I, I'm I'm so excited. We got the yeah. premise. Yeah, the, the gap between last year the, between last year and this year was is pretty enormous in terms of how I felt, you know. And that's just me personally. I, I understand everybody has different priorities. Uh, we're looking for different things. Whether you're just you, a you grumpy know. old man. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I, I I was uh, I was I was very excited to me to me Halo kind of made the show for me. I mean, there was some other good stuff yesterday, but but that was that was the thing I needed to have be good, and it was so. Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess so. We'll let you do the, the, your classic uh, sign off, and yeah. uh, so that'll be it. we. Uh, it's interesting when we first started uh, streaming, we had like two people because uh, we didn't have time to tweet it or anything. It was kind of uh, ten a.m. is kind of early after E three night. All right, that, that, that's what it feels like to me. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of people watching. Um, if you guys don't know who we are, we're Xbox Era. We're uh, channel focused primarily on Xbox. Um, or how do I how do I phrase it? For Xbox fans, by Xbox fans, right? Uh, one thing you notice is that a lot of no Xbox, yeah, a lot of Xbox channels don't actually know anything, especially <laughs> the non-Xbox channels. Like, oh man, I was watching some of the reactions yesterday, and I'm like, dude, this is age was re age four was revealed on. like a year ago, like yeah. <laughs> whatever. Either, <laughs> either way, um, if you enjoyed our, our content today, our show, this is episode twenty one. So there's a lot of episodes previously where you can hear us discuss the sandbox like six times an episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoy our content, please check our YouTube channel out. If you want to find a place to, uh, talk Xbox, talk Halo, we have a forum as well that we run. 
um it's just xboxera.com the little forum button check us out there and if you really enjoy our content if you want to see more and if you want to see uh higher production quality uh, please consider uh, subscribing to our patreon or checking it out at least and please like and comment if you have any comments at all any kind of concerns any kind of criticisms are we too quiet are we too loud uh did we not go long enough did we go too long you know that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> and yeah i guess that's it all right guys all right yeah. Thanks everyone. Uh, Thanks everybody. We're not usually this low energy. It. Okay, uh, <laughs> our usual yeah, times so, like in the um, evening. We were writing we a lot yesterday. Thing planned. Night, so. um, we were talking about our next book podcast. We'll Ooh, get to yes. soon. We'll most yes. likely be Halo: The Fall of Reach. Just where it all started. The, yeah. Oh so, wow. Okay. I can, where talk we'll along with it. Part of that. Yeah, if yeah. you haven't read it already, Halo: The Fall of Reach, and. Um, and in terms of, uh, there's another blog post happening on the 23rd, I think, of June, something like that. It's focusing on waypoint and customization. So that'll be a pretty right. big one. We'll be back to our regular cadence um, after this. So probably, what, next next Thursday, the 24th? I believe so. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. All righty. All right. Bye, everyone. All right, guys. All right. Take Have it a good easy. one.